American Indoor. Woods with the putback. What a day. Quick set and the kill. How's an unstoppable right now? This is TPSN. Introducing Ortega's Lawn Care Service. Need a lawn makeover? We know lawn care. Whether you're planting, trimming, or just need routine maintenance, we do it all. Your lawn deserves the best. Your lawn transformed. Don't wait. Get a quote today. We're here for you. Your journey to a beautiful lawn starts here. Call us today at 806-341-0004. Let's get started. Call us today at 806-341-0004. We know how big sports are here in the Panhandle. Really was a thriller here. Maybe the best game of the high school football season. Which is why we have the biggest sports team in the Panhandle. News Channel 10 Sports, the best source for local sports. Welcome to the Amarillo Civic Center, everyone. We're getting ready for Amarillo Venom football on the Texas Panhandle Sports Network at News Channel 10. I'm Mike Roden, along with color commentator K.J. Doyle. And it is an exciting atmosphere here tonight, KJ, as we get the league play underway. The Venom, of course, started with a non-league victory here last week to get the season underway. Looked very impressive in that victory. And now they get to take on a little different type of team, the defending league champion, the Columbus Lions in town. Should be a dandy matchup. Absolutely, Mike. And you have to imagine they gained a lot of confidence from that game, put up a lot of points, a huge victory for the Venom. 82 points scored in that game for the team. But the big theme today for the Venom will be adversity, just overcoming the depletion of their roster over the course of this week. They've had some injuries they've had to deal with, some players down with illness. So they are a very depleted team. A lot of players that put up a lot of those points for them last week not playing today. So the big question will be whether or not they can overcome that over the course of a season. You'll have games like this. You don't necessarily want it to be big ones, like you mentioned, against the reigning league champs. But this will be a big test. And if the Venom can come out on top, it says a lot about their team. We'll talk more about those injuries as we go along here tonight, but we're ready for football. Rodney Pierre back deep along with Siobhan Richardson. Richardson, a newcomer from last week on this team. He wears number 14 for the Venom. And here we go. We're ready for the kickoff. The Columbus Lions and the Emerald of Venom on TPSN and News Channel 10 too. Glad you're with us here from Amarillo, the Civic Center Coliseum. And here is the kick, high and deep. And it will be taken in the end zone by Siobhan Richardson. He goes right up the middle, one man to beat, and he will take it the distance. How about that start for the Venom? Well, the offense didn't even need to step on the field for the points to keep on being scored for the Venom. You saw that return, the block set up great, just needed to make one cut, only had the kicker to beat, and was able to just blow right past him to get into the end zone. A tremendous play to start this game, and a lot of momentum on the Venom side right off the bat. Wow, and Siobhan Richardson making an impact right away in his first game with the Amarillo Venom. That was an explosive beginning and couldn't have drawn it up any better for this big home showdown between the defending league champion Columbus Lions and the homestanding Amarillo Venom. Now we'll get the two-point conversion. Dalton Cole is the quarterback. Dalton James, of course, is one of the injuries that KJ mentioned on our uh, pregame a moment ago. And so he's not here this week. But in the backfield, hopefully a very capable replacement from the Ohio State University. Maurice Contact Douse wearing number six. And now as we get set, let's get the officials call. Oh, Emerald Venom, they're first. It's 30 seconds. So the Venom a little unsure of things with the clock at 13.44, just barely any time elapsed with the opening kickoff going the distance. But you definitely want to be on the same page, so no need, uh, no reason not to spend an early time out and get everything straight. And, Mike, that could be one of the things we talked about with a lot of new players out there. Get, getting everyone on the same page may be a challenge, but... Having that big early score right off the kickoff makes things a lot easier. You have a little more time to get things sorted away and figure things out. And the real thing that stands out to me about that kickoff return was I got the chance to go to the Venom practice this week, and Dalton Cole 
made note while he was throwing of just how fast his receivers were. He was even getting a little frustrated trying to catch up with their speed. Wow. And you saw the speed on full display right there. Well, he certainly did. Right up the middle, Siobhan Richardson taking it to the house. All right, let's see what Cole and company have in mind on this two-point conversion. He'll drop back to pass and throws to the near side. It is caught in the end zone for the two-point conversion. Coming down with that is wide receiver Zachary Atkinson, and the Venom looking very strong here early. They lead it 8 to nothing with 13.41 to play here in this first quarter. You saw Cole had two receivers in the area there. It seemed as though... They thought they, they misconnected on, on, the, on the first glance. It seemed as though he just missed his receiver, but luckily two in the area able to find that two-point conversion in the back of the end zone and put eight points on the board early. We, being in a new league, the American Indoor Football League, we thought we might look at some of the rules and the differences in rules uh, from what uh, have been the, has been the case in past uh, leagues. And one of the things, KJ, that I know you pointed out is this thing called Uno. <laughs> it's not the Uno game, that, the card game that we're all used to, but we'll, we want to explain that as we go along here uh, in just a little while. So that's, uh, it is worth one point, uh, but it's an interesting, uh, really an interesting rule that I've never heard of in any league before that the kickoff team can actually score an Uno. Well, we'll see if it comes into play right here. You may note, it, of course, it, the, one of the ways you can get it, it has to go through the uprights on the kickoff. Now, you made note of the low ceilings and, and kind of the uh, the rafters, the rafters yeah. here in the Civic Center and how that can make that difficult. Here's Thomas Kadera, and he puts it out of the back of the end zone. And so the Columbus... Did not touch anything in the field of play. The ball be placed at the 20-yard line. First down, Amarillo Venom. And there's that rule interpretation. They will start at the 20. So, yeah, in this uh, in, in this arena, it's going to be really hard to score a Nuno, I would think. Right. Uh, it's, it's the same reason they don't kick a field goal from way back deep. It's because uh, the rafters hang pretty low here, and that can, that can uh, get you hung up uh, when you try a, a long uh, place kick. So not sure we'll see many Unos, but wouldn't that be something if we did? Well, it was interesting to see on that kick. It seemed like they tried to kick it a little lower, maybe in attempt for an Uno. Obviously not the location he probably wanted on that kick. Quarterback is Marcus Brooks for the Columbus Lions, and he will drop back to pass, and he will go deep right off the bat, and that ball is incomplete. Looking for his receiver, a uh, receiver, Jarman Ferguson, he was looking for a flag, but doesn't get it. And you saw it looked like Ferguson, of course, as you mentioned, midway through his route stopped and, and kind of was calling for that flag. Uh, wasn't getting it. I don't know that he would have been able to catch up to it anyway. Uh, might have been a little bit of a hold there. It was hard to, to tell on the, the uh, initial view of it, but nonetheless, incomplete for the, for the Lions. Roderick Kirkland was in coverage for the Venom. Brooks under center again. Quick drop this time and throw to the far side. It's complete and out to about the 20 yard line with the catch is Deloach, Roman Deloach. And that will be just short of a first down. It'll be second and about a yard to go. First down marker at the 20. Third so, and about a yard. Uh, third down, yeah, I forgot about the first down, uh, long pass in completion. So third and one here for the Lions. Brooks with a big running back to his right. And he will get the carry over the far side. And the Venom not having any of that. Meeting at first for Amarillo was JT Graydon, and he got some help from his teammates. And I think that was big one, uh, Corey Washington in the backfield there, nearly 300 pounds of running back on that play, and there's no game. Well, it looked like the Lions were going to be able to pick that up on first glance, but a great play by Washington to plug that hole and now force a fourth and one here for the Lions early on. See what Brooks has in mind on fourth down. He'll go short underneath. They have the first down and more, and an easy score on the pass play to Dominic Ewing. And quickly, the Lions silence this hometown crowd from Amarillo as they get on the board and cut 
the deficit to two. And just a smart play from the Lions. The, the Venom in off coverage there, for whatever reason, on fourth and short, able to just pick up a, a quick three-yard hitch and then use that speed to bring it all the way into the end zone. So smart offensive play calling there from the Lions to get the touchdown. And like, I was going to say they were going to go for two, but it looks like they're trying to get a place kicker or a holder out on the field. Or maybe a quarterback, who knows? No, it's a holder. Place kicker is Ryson Richardson. And his kick is good right down the middle. So with 10-19 to go in this rapidly moving first quarter, it's the Venom leading the Lions by a score of 8-7. to seven. And that's getting back to a little bit of the rules of the American indoor football, uh, KJ, about extra point kicks, one point. Uh, now you can drop kick it yes. for two, correct? Yes, yeah. <laughs> drop kick it for two points. Uh, also have that option, as you mentioned, if you are in fourth down situation, if you want to try to get the four points via drop kick of a field goal, you can do that or just do the place kick field goal. So a lot of different ways to score for these teams. Yeah, and you see safety there were two points and then it gets to that uno, uh, which we were talking about, the one point awarded to the kicking team if the kicker kicks through the uprights and over the crossbar on any free kick. So now some interesting uh, differences in maybe some of the other indoor leagues that the Amarillo Venom have played in, and we'll get to some of the others uh, a little bit later on in our coverage. Eight to seven, each team scoring on their first possession. Well, really, the Venom haven't even had an offensive possession yet. They took the opening kickoff for the distance, and this one high and deep, and I think that might have been good for Anuno had it been a little further uh, to the left, but it goes... The 20-yard line, first down, Amarillo Venom. Certainly pretty close, and normally I would suggest maybe not giving another team the ball at the 20-yard line, but after the Venom just returned that first kickoff all the way to the house, maybe the better option for the Lions at this point in the game to try to keep it away from those dangerous Venom return men. All right, we'll see the Venom on offense now. And see what they can do to, on their first offensive possession. They've scored on special teams. And again, in the backfield this week, the running back Maurice contact Dows from Ohio State. Dalton Cole, the quarterback. And in motion all over the place, but they'll keep it on the ground and then flags fly everywhere. Snap, false start, number seven, offense, five-yard penalty, it's first down. So the Venom misfiring on that first down play. And Dalton Cole, he looked good in last week's win, but also Caleb Lowe uh, came in and played well at quarterback for the Venom. So it looks like they're pretty set, at least at that position. Absolutely, and it's certainly an interesting play there where Cole gets called for the false start for the Venom. Must have just had a, a little bit of a miscommunication on the snap that backs him up now five yards after the kickoff went out of the back of the end zone. Obviously the timing has to be right with those receivers going from deep in motion and hit the line of scrimmage just at the right moment. Here's the throw and nearly picked off on the near side of the field. Went right through the hands of one of the Lion defenders. <laughs> He's going to punish himself with a few, with a few push-ups. Mike Swan, <laughs> Swan, the player who felt like he needed to hang on to that football, and probably the coaches agree with that. That could have been a big change of momentum. Well, that's certainly one way to show a little self-accountability on the field for dropping the interception, but I, I, don't, I don't know if I'd want to tire myself out too much dealing with these Venom receivers. Yeah, because they do have a lot of speed, as we've already mentioned. Here's Cole under pressure, and he will go down at the five-yard line. Back there, a couple of Lions players, Cam Washington, and I think DeKeven Ware was the first to greet him. And so a big loss on the play, and the Venom going in the wrong direction suddenly. And that was just a miscommunication up front and blocking Mike there. The, it seemed like the, the Venom just not on the right, uh, not on the same page on the offensive line, and now you're talking about a penalty and a sack to back you up and, and give you third and long here. We know these Venom receivers can 
dig you out of a hole like this, but not something you want to put yourself in after this is our first look at the Venom offense today after they had that big return to start, really. So not a great sign in the early going here for the Venom. Venom offensive front was pretty strong in last week's game, giving up an early sack here. So a long way to go on third and 19 for the Venom, and Cole able to pick it up, thankfully, or that could have been disastrous. And now some back and forth between a couple of the players. And the miscues continue a little bit early here, Mike. Just a bad snap. Cole couldn't handle it. Looked like his running back even might have gotten in the way a little bit. That didn't help. And now the Venom really in a tough spot, fourth and long. And we'll see what they decide to do here. Very fortunate bounce on that fumble. Clock running, as it will, by the way. And we'll have one of those uh, slides up for the uh, timing of the game coming up in a little while, but the clock runs until there is one minute left in the half. All right, so the Venom backed up deep in their own territory. And it will be Thomas Red Cadera, and it will be a field goal attempt from a long way away. He seems to be trying to get a, an idea of where to space himself here on this one with not a lot of room to work with. Well, and you can't get it up high because it, and that's about as good as he could hope for. It's taken around the 15 yard line and some room around the far side of the field. And Marte Deers makes a good return out of it for the Lions and they'll set up shop in business. But there is a penalty marker back at the line of scrimmage. Well, you see, you just didn't have much room back there. No, certainly not. Not what you want as a kicker in terms of getting yourself a little bit of a runway there. But still. Uh, Number five defense, five-yard penalty, replay fourth down. All right. We'll, we'll see if that, that changes the decision here for the Venom. That certainly helps uh, Amarillo's cause. The very least gives you a little bit more space to get this kickoff. Maybe, yeah. I would think that they would try to go for it here, and that's, well, maybe not. That Kadera is still on. Place kicker for the Venom out of William Penn University. Don't know, it's Dalton Cole back there as well. But he's the holder. Okay, so he will, if we ever get the play underway, will be the holder. Columbus so. Lions, their first. Timeout on the field. So we have a timeout with 6.21 to play in this opening quarter. It's been a good one as we expected. It's the Amarillo Venom leading the Columbus Lions by a score of 8-7. to seven. And we'll come back to the Civic Center in just a moment on the Texas Panhandle Sports Network and News Channel 10-2. Grid Care has been working to make your daily routine a little easier for over 25 years. And now you can track your blood sugar with real-time readings without the finger sticks. Stop by and speak with one of our experts about continuous glucose monitors. You can pick it up on site or get it shipped directly to your door. Plus, we will work directly with your doctor. We're here, we're local, and we'll always be there for you. Grid Care Home Medical, 1800 South Coulter. If you want a hip and groovy spot to pursue your success, look no further than the campuses of Amarillo College. For over 90 years, AC has been educating for the future. So pursue your passion here, where success is timeless. Do you have transmission problems? Scottish Transmissions has been your go-to transmission specialist since 1972 with 21st century technology featuring great old-fashioned service, minor repairs, major repairs, and specialized maintenance to increase performance and longevity. Scottish Transmission, a hometown business with a nationwide warranty still at 4040 Canyon Drive or scottishtransmission.com. Call Scotty's 806-358-4040. Scotty's Transmission. <laughs> Eight to seven ball game here in the first quarter between the Amarillo Venom and the defending league champions, the Columbus Lions. Mike Roden along with KJ Doyle. Glad you're with us on the Texas Panhandle Sports Network. 
at News Channel 10 too. Venom backed up deep in their own territory. And on is their place kicker, Red Kadera, to try to boot them out of trouble a little bit. Has more room to work with, oh. but that one is blocked and goes right up into the air. And it will be brought down by the Venom, but it's not going to really matter unless the scrum goes a long way. And so that will result in the ball going over on downs. And that's, again, the difficulty on a kick line to like gain. that. First down, Columbus Lions. You just have to get it down as low as you possibly can, and that is one of the problems. Uh, you might get it blocked, and that's exactly what happened. Right. I think you're saying the Civic Center, you're seeing the Civic Center just come into play there, certainly. And, you know, we thought the kick, the re-kick was going to help the Venom, it seems. Maybe that, not. Not so much on, on that play. And then the kind of the miscues continue here early. You see how big that first kickoff return was because the Venom are still in the lead. If they can just work past some of the miscues here, they're still in a good position. Marcus Brooks is the quarterback. He is under center. And will throw over the middle. And a flag comes in as the ball is caught. As Roman Deloach makes the catch in the end zone, pending the penalty flag. Interference, defense. That penalty is declined. Result of the play, touchdown. Well, Mike, you saw Deloach use all of his 6'5 his build. Not easy for anyone to cover on this Venom roster when you have a receiver with that kind of size. And you get him in motion with that kind of size. That's a lot to deal with, especially when he's got a head of steam. And you saw the Lions take full advantage of it on that touchdown. Now the try for the extra point from Richardson. Make his first attempt and it makes the second as well. So 14 to 8 our score with 528 to go in this opening quarter. And let's get back to some of the American indoor football rules and just how things are situated, KJ, as we talk about the field. And you had a question during one of the breaks as well. Yes, uh, as far as the, the sideline and how that comes into factor, we saw it on the, the kickoff or the uh, field goal that the Amar Amarillo had where they went down the sideline and the, the, how the sideline and out of bounds works a little bit differently in indoor football. And also you see here the game consists of four 15-minute quarters, uh, modified running clock, uh, except for the final minute of each half as well. All right, we'll have a timeout and come back right after this on the Texas Panhandle Sports Network and News Channel 10 too. Is your house letting in more than just sunshine? Drafty windows and doors can make your home feel uncomfortable and cost you money on your energy bills. Here at Reese Window and Door Replacement, we can help. We specialize in replacing windows, exterior doors, storm doors, and even pet doors. Our experienced technicians will get the job done right, quickly and efficiently. Don't suffer through another summer with drafty windows and doors. Call today for your free estimate. That's 806-335-0677. Reese Window and Door Replacement. Across the Texas Panhandle, high school football is what defines the fall. And after the stadiums are empty, there's only one more thing to do. Enjoy a freshly baked pizza from Domino's. Call and get it delivered right to your door. Or order on our convenient app and choose Domino's car side delivery. Then let us know when you're here and we'll have it out to you in less than two minutes. So enjoy watching the night's highlights with a slice in hand. Domino's Pizza. You'll be glad you did. Ortega's Lawn Care Service, your one-stop shop for all your outdoor needs. Find us on Facebook or call 341-0004. That's Ortega's Lawn Care Service. Well, after the timeout, we'll get the kickoff now with the Venom trailing for the first time, 14-8. to eight. And, Mike, if I was the Lions here, I'd kick it right out of the back of the end zone again. The Venom haven't shown much on offense so far in this game, and I'm fine with giving them at the 20 with what we saw on that last drive. Siobhan Richardson returned the opening kickoff for a touchdown for the Venom. And there is a long kick that will go out of the back, just as KJ predicted. And so no chance for Richardson or Ron to be there. Line, first would... down, Amarillo Venom. Well, hopefully this offensive possession will be a little bit better than what the 
uh, previous offensive possession for the Venom Warriors. You know, Mike, we didn't see it on that last crowd shot, but we're seeing a lot of green in the crowd for the for St. Patrick's Day. I'm glad to see so many people coming out showing their holiday spirit here. The, the green and uh, the red really making it feel like Christmas for the Venom. <laughs> they are in their red uniforms, or at least a lot more red. Uh, in addition to the gold, they had pretty much all gold uniforms last week. So from the 20-yard line, first and 10 here for the Amarillo Venom. Quarterback Dalton Cole sends his men in motion. will run an option play to the right side. Running back hit and dropped. Push back is Nigel Seeley in it running back on that play, and that goes for negative yardage. I like the idea for the Venom just trying to get something going on offense after they struggled the last time out, but the Lions just all over it in this defense, playing with a lot of confidence right now after what they were able to accomplish on that last drive, and you can see it. They just have a different aura about them right now out there on the field, the Lions, and the Venom, I think they need to try to take advantage of this speed on the outside, just look deep, try to get one of these receivers behind the defense. Yeah, there were four, maybe even five defenders there for the Lions, led by Decavian Ware, and Seeley just had no place to run. So second down and about 15 at least to go for the Venom. Here's the pass deep over the middle, and that was the intention, as you mentioned, KJ, uh, looking for one of those speedy wideouts. That one was Rodney Pierre, but a little bit too far and out of his reach incomplete. And he, Cole did have him there, just a little bit overthrown, as you mentioned. You know, the coverage wasn't terrible out there. It, it was going to be an easy pass by any means, but those are the ones you definitely want to have uh, if you're Dalton Cole, especially when you're, at this point, trailing in the game by six and you're looking for something to get this offense feeling confident. So third down and 15 now. The ball right at the 15-yard line. And I'm just kind of feel like they just need a positive play on offense, even if it, it doesn't go for a score or anything like that. Just something positive here. Cole will put it up and again goes deep. And that looked like the player was hit well before the ball arrived. Maybe it was uncatchable, but wow, there was some contact there. And, uh, you know, I really don't hate the idea there, Mike, but if you looked at the 20-yard line, Zachary Atkinson was open on a short hitch, and you had mentioned it, just looking for something positive at this point, and unfortunately, they go for the big play, and it come up a little bit short of that. There was a little bit of context. You mentioned a little bit of a bump. Was the pass uncatchable? It was a little bit out of bounds, hard Amarillo to say. Venom, their second. It's 30 seconds. Coach Krantz is not at all happy. Looks like he and probably wanted a flag there. I think saying that he's unhappy is a bit of an understatement. Uh, yes, he definitely wanted a flag there. There uh, was, you know, I think he's got a legitimate complaint. Uh, by the way, the uh, intended receiver was Hassan Brockman for the Venom. And again, just too deep on the passes from the quarterback, Dalton Cole. Coach Krantz will take a minute to be able to get his opinion across. Yeah, and I think a good moment there from Coach Krantz. Just, you know, try to try to spark the team a little bit. You know, fi get him fired up a little bit and get some emotion injected into the game. So on fourth and 15, here's the pass. This one, much like the previous two, but that is just a good defense.
suggestions. <laughs> I, I feel like, uh, you know, they, they're trying everything right now, trying to shift to the run, trying to deep pass. And here, again, just looking for that quick completion, a little hitch, perfect, wide open, and just a, a rough drop there for the Venom. And again, this offense just running into some big struggles and having some issues just making some simple plays. Just got to settle down and get back Gestions. to your game. I, I so feel like, I, you know, they, they're trying that. everything right now, trying Cole to shift to the run. Fake to the near side, now looks here. for some Again, running room, breaks one tackle. There's a, a flag hit, back in the middle part of the field. Big hit and just a, a by one of the Lions there defenders for the Venom. on the far side. Again, this big number 74, Desmond Scott. Running into some big struggles. And you to be hoping Cole's issues, okay. Looks like he's up and walking all right, but that was a hard hit into the sideline. Just got to settle down and get back to your game. I feel like, you know, they're trying everything right now. That's a big one right there to help the Venom get out of the hole as they will move the ball all the way into Lion territory at 20 yards. I feel like certainly you'll take what you can get at this point. The Venom is just on this drive, already down two touchdowns, and the Lions offense has shown no weaknesses so far they're going to be clearly very tough to stop today so the venom need to make sure they put up some points here because it could be one of those classic shootout kind of games that you're going to have to be able to keep up with the pace of cold takes the low snap throws to the near side a little bit high and off target again intended receiver on the near side is zachary atkinson for amarillo and that was just good coverage from the Lions. They had everything blanketed there. Two defenders in the area. A throw a little bit high and outside, but you're trying to avoid putting that in danger, trying to avoid throwing a pick there. The Lions, just a great job covering everything up there and putting the Amarillo Venom still behind the eight ball here is second down and trying to get some quick completion here. Two receivers to the near side of the field. One will go in motion to the far side and join a teammate at the line of scrimmage. They faked the handoff, maybe should have handed it off because the quarterback is dropped. And we do have a penalty marker as well. Officials gather near midfield to talk about that and sort it out. And will give us the call. Looked like there was some pushing and shoving. I'm not sure if the flag related to that. Personal foul, number zero defense, 10-yard penalty, automatic first down. We're going from the end. Well, a couple of plays in a row. and Here's a look at that last play. And there you see the contact and the penalty. A little bit of jawing between these players, a lot of emotions flying high at this point, but another penalty for the Lions here. You can't have those at oh. this point of the game if you're Columbus, knowing that you're in a great spot, you're up three scores, the Venom offense is struggling. You can't give away the yardage like that. You have to make the Venom earn it. Dropping back, and the throw over the middle, tipped and nearly intercepted before it got to the receiver. Getting a hand on that pass was Kai Griswold. And again, Coach Rick Krantz unhappy with the officials, thought there might have been some illegal contact along the way. Doesn't get the call. Coach Krantz right now talking to his quarterback, Dalton Cole, on the field. Right now, 11-minute mark of the second quarter. The Venom have yet to complete a pass in this game, which is just remarkable. But we talked about the things that are impacting this offense right now and trying to overcome it. I think the, the elements are there. They're just, uh, they, they have had deep shots that they can make. They've had these quick outs that they've been able to, to have open. They just need to find that switch and make things click and get this offense rolling. Nigel Seeley is in it running back to the right side of his quarterback. Cole takes the snap. He will go underneath to Seeley who catches it and tries to spin out of a tackle around the 15-yard line. Can't quite do that. And then more extracurricular activity and penalty markers. Well, at this point, if I'm the Venom, I'm taking the yardage any way I can get it. And if this is another penalty against the Lions, which... Unsportsmanlike conduct, number zero defense, his first of the game. 
The penalties half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. Second consecutive penalty called on Marte Deers. 6'4", 230-pound linebacker out of Faulkner University. And Columbus it, Lions, their first, it's 30 seconds. And the Lions taking a timeout here, smart. Talk to your defense right now because that's the third penalty on this drive for the Lions. And they have to understand, we have all the momentum right now in this game. The Venom offense is struggling. You don't want to give them this free yardage and risk them punching in a touchdown here and all of a sudden getting that momentum back that they hadn't been able to find. Yeah, as you said, especially since they've dominated play to this point, they have to be feeling pretty good about themselves coming into a hostile environment here in Amarillo and rolling to a 21-8 lead after the first quarter of play. Some of the highlights for you. So that last drive, just a great pass again, great placement. Uh, from the Lions quarterback Marcus Brooks on that touchdown and then on that one it felt like maybe again just a little bit of a push off in the end zone but the Lions get away with it and end up scoring and the difference right now we're seeing between the Lions offense and the Venom offense very stark but the Venom now a great opportunity golden opportunity inside the 10 here set up with a first and goal from the seven let's see if they can punch it in Dallas back in it running back Cole, under pressure, hit, keeps his feet, fights for yardage, and he'll go down short of the five-yard line around the seven. And, boy, here we've got big-time skirmish breaking out. Alton Cole taking some exception to getting roughed up at the end of that play. And the officials just have to do what they can to try to retake control of this game. Things... Getting a little bit heated at this moment. Of course, throughout this drive, we've seen it pop up. For whatever reason, there seems to be a lot of animosity on the field right now. So the officials need to try to do what they can to get things under control, settle everybody down, and try to get this game back on track. Well, and I've noticed there has been some, uh, a lot, in fact, of talking back and forth. And, you know, again, I'm sure Columbus came in with a little bit of a chip on their shoulder with... You know, all the talk about the new team of the league, the Amarillo Venom being so strong. Here's the, well, thought we were going to get the call, but now we get it. Through the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 74 defense, his first of the game. Also after the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 56 offense. Those fouls cancel, it's second down. So Desmond Scott, the guilty party for the Lions. Bright Anchor, the center. The guilty party for the Venom, basically just defending his quarterback, I think, in his mind. But nonetheless, offsetting penalties. Second down and goal from the Venom from the seven-yard line. And then shifting personnel around. Contact Dallas to the left of the quarterback. Alton Cole sends men in motion. Wants to throw. Now flushed out of the pocket. Comes to the near sideline, and it is incomplete. Tried to dump it off at the last minute. And one thing we've noticed, KJ, is that the Lions are getting some pretty good pressure on Dalton Cole. And here's a flag. You see a conversation being had between Dalton Cole and his receiver. Looked like maybe open in the back of the end zone was For open. 52, blitz outside the left guard. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Zachary Atkinson in for the Venom. And it looked like that was uh, Rodney Pierre in the back of the end zone, just having a conversation with his coach and his quarterback. It looked like maybe Dalton Cole had him there in the middle of the back of the end zone in that last and play. He was clearly frustrated after that one. And I think, actually, instead of number four, it was 14, Siobhan Richardson. He's the one doing push-ups out on the field that uh, missed the, uh, the catch there. Right, yes, that was the yeah. receiver that, that Cole was targeting, but I was saying that uh, Rodney Pierre looked like he was open in another part of the play and maybe a little frustrated that his quarterback couldn't find him. Cole, again, flushed from the pocket, and in the back of the end zone, it is Pierre. a touchdown. How about that catch, Rodney Pierre? 
And again, as I mentioned, Rodney Pierre maybe a little frustrated on that last play, not getting yeah. the ball. Cole finds him this time. Looked like he was open in that same part of the field. It took just a half a beat for Cole to see him and throw it up for him. And what a grab. You know you're going to come down on the top of that wall, and somehow you got to keep your focus on catching that ball and bringing it in. And Rodney Pierre did just that. And, you know, receivers – in this game, Mike, they can always want those targets. You know, any receiver, you ask him how many targets, he wants all of them oh, during yeah. the course of a game. Pierre wanted that one last time, called for it, you know, and, and to his credit, Cole looks for him, and he comes through for him. Thomas Kadera on to try the extra point kick, and that one is on the way, and no good. Wide to the left side. So it remains 21 to 14 with 8.54 to play here in this second quarter. We've got a timeout on the field and we will come right back to the Civic Center Coliseum after this break on the Texas Panhandle Sports Network and News Channel 10. If you're trying to find ways to stay warm in your home this winter, you better call Scott Co. Their team of highly skilled professionals will have your home's heating system operating in top condition or they can install a more energy efficient model, keeping you warm and saving you money. Don't let problems ruin the day-to-day -day comfort that you cherish in your home. Call Scott Co. today and find out why they have been trusted since 1972. Scott Co., your local independent American standard heating and air conditioning dealer. At SB Vision in Canyon, we're more than just eye care. We specialize in sports vision, enhancing the visual responses for athletes of all kinds. We can work with any athlete to help the eyes and brain process visual cues faster, enhancing the skills the athlete already has. Any age, any athlete, any sport can benefit from our services. Call to make an appointment today. SB Vision, eye care from home to field. My name is Grayson Kraft and I own and operate Sand Hill Livestock here in Canadian, Texas. I'm a third generation cowman myself. I work out here on a daily basis with my son and my future son-in-law and they're very instrumental and helpful to me. Sand Hill does some farming and backgrounds livestock for clientele. We weigh their cattle and then load them on a truck and ship them to a desired yard. Capital Farm Credit believes in the producer. They leave you alone and let you go do your job. Together, we're better. Big game here in the American Indoor Football as the defending champion Columbus Lions in town to take on the Amarillo Venom, the new kids on the block for AIF anyway. And a big score right there, KJ, as you talked about, almost a not, not, not a must-score situation, but not far from it. Certainly in terms of the first half, I mean, you're talking about the Lions have all the momentum and the, the Venom offense just needing something positive as we're going to take another look at. An incredible throw under pressure and it just really a was. great catch uh, from Pierre in the back of the end zone. So the Venom offense finally figuring something out. Now it's the defense's turn. They, they've had three touchdown drives so far in this game. Obviously, it's a high-scoring game. You're going to give up a lot of points, but really that fourth and one to start the game is the one I come back to. and A little bit of a, a question as to why they were playing that far off in coverage in that situation. Obviously not wanting to give up the touchdown, but... A great move leads to the touchdown anyway. So the Venom offense, let's see if they can force some turnover, some sort of turnover on this drive, or at the very least make it tough on the Lions. Damian Ewing chases that down inside the five-yard line, looking for running room, and he's got some. Look out. And tripped up by Thomas Kadera. Otherwise, that one was going the distance. What a tremendous touchdown saving tackle. The Venom tried a, a little bit of a squib kick there. And uh, it looked like it was going to work to perfection, but just look at this cut from the Lions here on this return. Just one cut, makes his move right up the field. Looked like he was going to be gone, but just a great touchdown saving tackle to prevent the Lions from taking that in. Even still, this offense being set up at the 16-yard line, not what you want if you're the Venom. Looks like the way that this offense has been playing, that's going to make things pretty easy on the Lions to punch in another score. Ewing may get some ribbing from his teammates because the kicker was able to bring him down on that. He couldn't avoid him. But he does set up his team in great field position. Marcus Brooks will take the snap. Short drop back, throws into the end zone, and that one is incomplete. 
Boy, a nice hit in the uh, back of the end zone on the defensive play by Siobhan Richardson to maybe jar that ball loose as Deloach was the intended receiver. Here's a good look at it. Those are the plays where you, just, you hope Deloach is okay because you see flips right over, over the on his stands. Head. Yeah. It looked like the maybe some of the uh, the fans or the, the media members, uh, you know, the Emerald Venom staff there, maybe been able to catch his fall a little bit. Helped a little bit there and it's for, to avoid a, a too bad of a, an, a fall. So second down and 10. Ball at the 16-yard line. Now the oh. quick pass picked off at the 12-yard line. And what a big defensive play by the Venom. That is D. Reese coming up with that interception. And what a read from D. Reese to come over from that jackpack position to make that interception. It so looks like the officials are discussing something on the field. You hope that it still results in a Venom turnover. It looks like it will, but just look at this read from Reese. Instantly knows where the ball's being thrown, gets right in front to make that interception. What a play to make, especially considering the Lions offense has not been so much. And personal foul, number 31, passing team. 10-yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. First down, Amarillo Venom. Well, a huge momentum shift there and the penalty on top of it, but really this, this Lions offense has not been fueled by these short completions. So you almost, it's a little bit of a risk there from D. Reese to try to jump that pass so quickly, but a tremendous read from him to get the interception, and that's exactly what the Venom needed. He looks like a really exciting player. You've got to be, if you're playing a position called Jack, Black, Jack Back, right? You've got to be that kind of intense player. And D. Reese showed his skill right there. And the Venom go to work on offense. That pass is tipped away and incomplete. Dangerously into the air. Into some fans along the sideline. So second down and 10 now for the Venom. And just a smart play there from the defensive back, Kai Griswood for the Lions, knowing when once that ball is tipped, it's fair game to put the hit on the receiver and make sure he can't come down with it. So tremendous play there to force the second down. Clock running with 6.20, as you see on your screen there, left to play in this second quarter. It's been a good first half. Venom struck quickly on the opening kickoff return for a touchdown. Lions put three scores on the board, and the Venom trying to bounce back now, scoring on their last possession, and in business at the 20 on this possession. Cole, kind of a little screen pass on the far side. And again, Venom player taking exception. That's Douse from Ohio State. And it looked like Cole was just trying to get rid of it there. He might have had his receiver briefly, but just facing a lot of pressure, quick dump off just to avoid the sack. And smart play there from Cole just to try to make sure he doesn't lose yardage there. But still, tough spot, third and 10 now from the 20. We're really seeing this Lions defense, just the athleticism from this defense just flying around, making it incredibly yeah. difficult at every level right now for the Venom up front. A, the pass rush just unrelenting. And in the secondary, the defensive backs speed. flying all over the place. Yeah. One-handed on the catch from center, and Dalton Cole is going to run out of room and be dropped for a loss of about five yards back to midfield. And so the Venom, a very promising possession going south in a hurry. And Cole was facing Emerald pressure. Emerald Venom, their third. It's 30 seconds. And Cole was facing pressure there, so you obviously know that that was a, a, a tough completion to try to come up with no matter what. Uh, down the opposite sideline, he did have his receiver, Hassan Brockman, open, but when you're facing that kind of a pass rush, it's hard to make that throw and uh, the Lions were coming with everything they had on that play. Yeah, DeAndre Brown was the first to apply the pressure and actually got a hold of Dalton Cole to bring him down. So loss of five, bringing up fourth and 15 right at midfield. Just under five minutes left to go in this opening half. And if you're the, the Venom right now, it's, it's tough to try to figure out what to turn to. The pass rush has just been so good for the Lions that you don't have much time to create anything on offense. 
Here is Dalton Cole with some time this time, and he goes deep, and that one out of the back of the end zone and incomplete according to the Lions players. Intended receiver Hassan Brockman doing all he could do to try to bring that ball down, but just a little too far. And you saw it again, the Lions there bring four, bring the pressure, and the Venom keeps someone in to block to give Cole just a little bit of time, but even still, the, the Lions just knowing where to place their defenders, have double coverage back there, and make that an incredibly tough completion to try to make. You see Cole still facing pressure despite having the extra blockers, and the Lions, it seems like they're playing with 11 players out there sometimes. It really does. They even had, as you said, two defenders back deep. Uh, covering on that pass play. So, again, the Venom not able to score and possibly draw even or take the lead. And now the opportunity swings back to the Columbus Lions. They have it at midfield. Marcus Brooks under center. And we'll go to work. He's under pressure, though. Flag on the play, and he goes down near the 15-yard line. Big number 91, Josh Jackson, dropping the quarterback for the Lions. It looked like Trayvon John lost his helmet there. I'm not sure if that's relating to the penalty. Maybe legal hands to the face, potentially, coming up for the Lions. Oh, yeah. I think it will be the penalty, as we saw in the replay. Romilio Kimbrough just took his helmet right off. Fouls on the play. Holding number 30 offense. That penalty is declined. Personal foul, hands to the face. Number 30 offense. That penalty is also declined. It's second down. Well, rough play for Kimbrough because he got called twice for two different infractions. Yeah, and you see John there. It looked like he was going to get the sack, and uh, Kimbrough just doing everything he can to try to make sure that doesn't happen, uh, although the penalty uh, it resulted in not helping the cause very much. On second down. Here's a pass over the middle, wide open receiver, has it at the 20-yard line and still going and finally out inside the 15-yard line goes Roman DeLoach. Found an opening right across the middle, KJ. And he's been the venom killer so far in this game for the Lions. Just We mentioned just the, this athleticism at 6'5 is so much to deal with and just wide open across the middle on that play. And the Venom able to bring him down, but not before picking up a first down. You see how he fought for those extra five yards on that play to get the first. From the 14-yard line, first down and 10 for the Lions. Here's the give to Kimbrough, and he breaks one tackle near the line of scrimmage. He's able to get to the edge and pick up some positive yardage. Not a lot, but some. And for this defense, you have to feel like they they have to be feeling some bit of confidence after that interception on the last drive and the pressure they were able to apply on first down here but after coming up with that interception on the last drive you you hoped the offense would able to be able to take advantage and they have to feel some sort of a, l a little bit of a down the fact that they couldn't capitalize off of their interception got a little more than i thought six yards on the carry second down and four Here's the pass into the end zone. It's tipped, but right into the arms of the receiver for the Lions. D'Amico Ewing with the touchdown catch. And D. Reese was there again. Almost came up with another interception. It would have been a crazy athletic play if he was able to get it, but just tips it and a great play from the Lions to still hang on to it. If he just was able to drop back a little bit further, maybe he could have got there, but the Lions... Put another touchdown up on the board here in this first half. By the way, uh, hats off to our crew back behind us. Great look there on the instant replay. Now the extra point kick from Ryson Richardson. Snap is bobbled, and it's tipped, and then it's off the upright. This is, well, maybe not returnable. Started to say that was returnable, but. So the extra point kick. Fails. Was there a penalty marker? Here's the call. Yes. Fouls on the play. Illegal defense, number 14, rush from the outside. Personal foul, roughing the kicker, number 14, defense. The try will be from half the distance to the goal. So 
and a great play to block it from the Venom. It wasn't even part of their illegal defense. You didn't, maybe didn't even need that rusher coming no. from the outside. But unfortunately, that's going to result in the Lions getting another chance here. And will they bring out the offense now that it's a little bit closer? Sure looks like that's what they've got in mind. But there's some confusion, and so they're going to have to call a timeout. Timeout. Columbus Lions, their third and final. It's 30 seconds. Getting close to the one-minute timeout as well. The one-minute warning, I guess, is what they'll call it. But, man, good game. 27-14, Lions over the Venom. And Lions, again, not letting the interception come back to haunt them as they got it right back on a defensive stop. You know, in this indoor game, it doesn't take many defensive stops to make the difference. Certainly, and going to get another look at this interception from D. Reese. Again, he almost had a second one on that last drive, but that was the play that you hoped would really swing things in the Venom favor. Here's a second chance at it. Just couldn't come up with it as the Lions come up with another touchdown from Ewing on that play. So holding up the number two actually after that one, his second touchdown of the day, trying to let everybody know how many he's going for. So it will be the offense on the field for the Lions. J.C. Newman is actually under center. Newman is going <laughs> to run right into the arms of the Amarillo Venom. Number 21 right there, Hassan Brockman, was not going to let him get loose. Or maybe that was DeMorian Bro. Couldn't tell if it was 21 or 31. Let's get a look at it on the replay here. Yeah, it was. Did you say it was 21 or 31? I think I it was tell. 21. I think it, I think it was uh, Brockman there on the on the sack for the Venom. Or uh, actually, I think you're right. I think it was. I think it was Bro there on the sack. Uh, for the extra point try. Yeah, so we 31. Get the look yeah. At it. And I, I also want to give a shout out to Josh Jackson who came over, make sure his teammate doesn't get the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty there, pulls him right away. Let's just take what we can get, not get another penalty on this try. We don't want to give them a third shot at it. Make sure we get off the field and celebrate the sack after the fact. All right, so Lions kickoff coming up. Still plenty of time left to go in this second quarter. And it would be big if the Venom could punch one in here before the end of the first half. Certainly, and you know, the Venom offense was able to find a little bit of a rhythm two drives ago thanks to some, some Lions penalties. And you just, you wonder what sort of adjustments that Coach Krantz is gonna have in store for his team and how they'll, they'll change things potentially here. But again, if I'm the Lions, not giving them a chance to return it, I'm going to make the offense earn it throughout the course of this game. Richardson, the deepest back. Pierre in front of him. And that one's going to bounce around. Richardson gives chase and has it now as he comes out looking for running room. Doesn't find just a whole lot as he's dropped just right around the 10-yard line as Benjamin uh, Smiley comes up to take him off his feet. And Mike, one of the other parts of getting an Uno potentially could have come into play there is there's also the element of the rule that if you're tackled in the end zone, the Uno comes into play as well. But the Venom do a nice job getting it out there, but have to start a little bit behind the eight ball here at the 11-yard line. So we'll see how that impacts the offense here. Almost feel like with the speed they have, Maybe it'll open some things up for a deep shot, which it feels like that's what Dalton Cole and this offense really want to get into. Well, they may have to do it from five yards further back. Why not? Institution offense, breaking the huddle with more than eight players. Five-yard penalty, it's first down. And just another self-inflicted wound there from the Venom offense to back themselves up. But you know, if you're at the nine-yard line, might as well be at the four. Maybe they just want to give their receivers a little bit extra, extra room to run out there. We'll see if that's something they try to open up here. It feels like with the amount of time left, you see the clock running. Now about to go under a minute, stopping right at one minute, minute warning. 
So we do get the one minute warning. When we come back, it'll be first and 15. Lions leading the Venom 27 to 14. We're back right after this on the Texas Panhandle Sports Network and News Channel 10 too. Texas Tech University Health Sciences Center is where futures are discovered, shaped, and achieved, both for individuals and for communities. This is where curiosity inspires greatness and breakthroughs save lives. What we explore here means tomorrow will be different because the best way to predict the future is to create it. And we are the future of health. You know, after more than 30 years of saying your buns are up, Buns Over Texas continues to be the destination for the build-your-own burger. Great A beef from the flat top, toasted buns, all the fixings at your fingertips. You make your Buns Over Texas burger exactly like you like it. Buns Over Texas is the famed birthplace for Texas tea, nine flavors on tap. Burgers, tea, and bluebell shakes, they're all going to bring a smile to your face. Buns Over Texas, 34th and Bell, Amarillo. Glad you've joined us here on this Sunday night for American Indoor Football from Amarillo. And you see the last touchdown by the Lions that have given them a 27 to 14 lead. Running through that block that was called back due to penalty as well. The Venom offense now setting up. Chance to take advantage here toward the end of the half. Pass comes to the near sideline. Not much there for Richardson. Oh, and that's a little too much aggressiveness. You got to stop at the whistle, Mike. You got to stop at the whistle. These, these Lions players are playing with a lot of aggression right now, a lot of aggressiveness. But forward progress was stopped. The whistle was blown, and they go a little bit extra, and that's going to take away the penalty yardage that they just benefited from. A personal foul, number one, defense. The foul occurred with the running clock under a minute. The game clock will start on the snap. So the stick's being moved way up towards the 21-yard line, and that's going to help the Venom a little bit. Again, they benefited a lot from these, uh, these defensive penalties against really the have. Lions. On their last scoring drive for sure, and another mental mistake. Cole scrambles up the middle. Now tries to get to the outside and there. You see the speed just closing things down. Did he lose the football? Yes, he did. He did. And it will go over to the Columbus Lions. What could be a costly turnover, a penalty marker down near the five-yard line. We'll see what this is. It looks like this is a after the play, uh, so it should still be Lions ball, but Cole just facing again this incredible pressure from the Lions defense and looked like the hands got up towards the face. Fumble recovered by the defense after the play delay a game number zero the recovering team for throwing the ball in the stands 10 yard penalty first down Columbus Lions. Now my question Mike there is that that was number zero already has one unsportsmanlike penalty is throwing the ball in the stands not classified as an unsportsmanlike penalty? Yeah good good question. But you see there, the hands kind of look like they get up towards the face just a little bit. No call from the officials, and the ball comes out. Cole, again, has done a nice job so far trying to evade the pressure as much as he's been able to, but they are just unable to escape the Lions' pass rush. And, you know, at this point of the game, the Venom right now have more offensive yardage via penalty than they do yardage gained, and that's something that, they're going to have to talk about yeah. in the locker room coming out of the second half. Definitely a concern. From the 24-yard line of the Lions on first down, pass to a wide-open receiver near the 15-yard line, and dancing into the end zone for the score is Ewing, which will be his third of the first half. And the Venom there just get completely spun around a great play from Ewing as he celebrates after the fact and really just a poor coverage wide open. Ewing was no one within 10 yards of him. And then look at the defender just completely lost for the venom and shaking his head a little bit. He knows that one's going to gonna hurt to watch back after this game is over. You never want to get spun around as a defender, but a great play from Ewing who's been huge in this first half for the Lions. 
one of the players the Venom are, are missing because of injury is defensive back Chris Jones. And so they could definitely use him tonight because they have had trouble covering these receivers from Columbus. High snap, but they get it down, and the place kick by Richardson is good. With 37.5 seconds left to go in the first half, it's the Lions 34 and the Venom 14. We get an opportunity again to talk about some of the rules, uh, KJ, that we haven't talked about so far. Uh, we mentioned uh, the scoring and how that kind of shakes out. Uh, we talked a little bit uh, as well about the uh, time uh, and uh, what you know how that's structured in AIF. You see the field dimensions, uh, the dasher boards mark out of bounds on all sides. Uh, the top of the dasher boards is out of bounds. Uh, so those are some of the things to keep in mind. And again, any loose ball which hits off the top, uh, except as we uh, saw earlier on that uh, touchdown pass, uh, is in play and a live ball. Right, and, so. and we saw that on the kickoff too when it, yes. it, it did hit off the barrier. That's still a live ball. That's in play. The Venom have to field that, and if they don't, then the Lions have a chance to recover. We'll see if they go with the same type of kick here they did last time. Pierre and Richardson back deep. It'll go to Richardson, one yard deep into the end zone. He's got room as he comes to the near sideline and taken off his feet right at midfield, and well, we have another yellow hanky on the field. And it looks like this is likely going to involve kind of a skirmish we saw around the 20 there between these, these three teams. I'm not sure if it's in the area of, of holding. The Venom were pointing at the Lions players, so. Well, and the Lions players were pointing <laughs> toward the Venom, so. Looks like maybe in the range of unsportsmanlike. Holding number five receiving team. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down, Amarillo Venom. So D. Reese getting the uh, call against him for holding. Well, 30 seconds left in the half, just about. The Venom really need a score here, down 20. If they can get something positive going into the locker room, it would certainly help out, of course. The Lions deferring, so they're going to get the ball coming out of half two, and the last thing you want is the Lions with the ball, a chance to go up four scores. So. As difficult a task as it may be, the Venom really need a score here with limited time remaining. This goes back to that last possession and that turnover that proved to be so costly instead of the Venom taking it down and scoring to end the half, it was the Lions tacking on another one. Flag on the play as the snap rolls to Cole. Then he almost completes the pass down the field. But again, penalty marker back towards the line of scrimmage. Again, a couple of fortunate hops tonight for the Venom off the turf, that being one of them. Defense, neither linebacker declared. Five-yard penalty, automatic first down. And really a missed golden opportunity. You mentioned Cole was under pressure, but Javon Richardson was wide open down the field. And if he could just have taken a little bit off of that one, just even just thrown it up, Richardson could have waited there and, and grabbed it. But that one goes out of bounds, and now the Venom Benefit a little bit from the penalty, but it would have been a lot nicer to have the ball inside of the 10-yard line, potentially already have that score on the board. Still 23 seconds to work with, first and 10 from the 19-yard line. We'll snap it to an up back. In there was Trayvon John. And the Venom are going to have to spend a timeout here because that didn't work at all. It didn't seem like that was the idea the Venom had on that play. It seemed like some frustration from, from Cole and from his coach, too. It seemed like that's not exactly the play they had drawn up for that one. But the Venom still have some time here. Second down, 15 seconds remaining. Maybe time for one, two more plays if things go correctly. And the Venom, just they're going to need to take advantage of a deep shot. The Lions here, they have to be playing back defensively. They have to know the Venom are looking for it all here. I would have more defensive backs maybe playing further back in this one. Once again, they snap it to the up back, which is Trayvon John. 
Second straight first time. Half. That one works a little bit better. Go. But that's going to do it for the first half. Just didn't have enough time to get the ball down the field. And, well, it uh, was a good, exciting first half. Didn't end on a real positive note for the Venom, however. For whatever reason, they just seemed content there to go into the locker room. Didn't seem like they wanted to put the ball in harm's way after what happened on the last drive. And you said it, Mike, that fumble from Dalton Cole there with just under a minute to go in the first half is really going to be one of the plays we maybe look back on in this game and say that was one of the key things that swung things in the Lions' favor. Well, we've got a lot coming up for you here at the break as we will uh, have some interviews with several of the players for the Amarillo Venom. K.J. Doyle's been hard at work this week to crank out those interviews to let our fans and viewers uh, hopefully get to know the team a little bit better. There's a lot of new faces on the Amarillo Venom, and I think you're going to enjoy meeting those through these interviews. So we'll get to some of those when we come back. Also, our highlights as well coming up. So hope you'll stay with us. Our halftime score, 34 to 14, the Columbus Lions coming on the road. And right now at the break, they lead the Amarillo Venom. We'll be back. Welcome to Medi Drive Pharmacy. We greet you by name and our pharmacists take the time to console you and answer all your questions. Our Health Mart Pharmacy specializes in serving our community with fast, friendly, professional service and the highest quality of medicine and health products. We accept most insurance plans, including Medicaid and Medicare, and we offer free in-town delivery to your home or business. Come visit us for all your health care needs. The Canyon Chamber of Commerce and TPSN want to wish everyone a safe and fun school year and a special shout out to all our student athletes. Be sure to stay tuned to TPSN for the best local high school sports coverage and stay in touch with the Canyon Chamber of Commerce online and on social for upcoming events and opportunities to support local small businesses. The Canyon Chamber of Commerce, canyonchamber.org. Is your house letting in more than just sunshine? Drafty windows and doors can make your home feel uncomfortable and cost you money on your energy bills. Here at Reese Window and Door Replacement, we can help. We specialize in replacing windows, exterior doors, storm doors, and even pet doors. Our experienced technicians will get the job done right, quickly and efficiently. Don't suffer through another summer with drafty windows and doors. Call today for your free estimate. That's 806-335-0677. Reese Window and Door Replacement. TPSN and Bubba's 33 are teaming up to bring you the best local high school sports. Right now, catch tons of high school games from the Texas Panhandle Sports Network at Bubba's 33 on I-40 in Georgia. And you know Bubba's has you covered with great food, cold drinks, and 74 screens so you don't miss a moment of the action. Plus, the good music and family-friendly atmosphere means everyone feels right at home. TPSN and Bubba's 33, your, your number one source for local high school sports. For over 40 years, Jimmy Fincher has taken the stress out of collision repair. Get a free written estimate and our satisfaction guarantee at Jimmy Fincher Auto Body Shop. Just as good as new, that's what we do. Jimmy Fincher Body Shop. Hey, I'm Dalton James from the Amarillo Venom. You're watching Venom Football on News Channel 10. Halftime here at the Amarillo Civic Center Coliseum. 34 to 14, your halftime score, the Amarillo Venom trailing the visiting Columbus Lions. And uh, it's easy to see why Columbus is the defending league champion. This team is talented, a lot of speed and quickness. We've talked about that, some big hitters on the team. And uh, they've looked good on both sides of the ball for sure. Absolutely. So far, the Lions have shown a lot offensively. And 
The Venom offenses and Venom offenses struggled. You can't blame them too much knowing who's out. You can't put too much blame on Dalton Cole knowing what he's had in terms of limited options, but certainly something they're going to have to talk about in the locker room and hope to kind of piece together on the fly here as they've tried to do all week. Well, one thing, again, we want to let you get to know the Venom players a little bit more, and so uh, we'll get to our highlights of the first half here coming up. But right now, let's go to KJ's interview. Uh, Trayvon John, I believe, is first up. He's a local product, and I uh, hope you'll get a uh, chance to uh, hear his interview and comments. And uh, uh, also, we'll have a couple of others as well coming up after that. But right now, here's this first interview. Uh, actually, I am from Emerald, Texas. I played at Tascosa High School. Um, I play linebacker. I'm um, blessed to be here. I play anywhere they need me to, honestly. What year did you graduate? 2016. Awesome. So just talk to me a little bit about, you know, how you got involved with the Venom and, and what made you want to be part of it. So the- I've been involved with the Venom for 12, 13. My, my father played for the Venom when I was younger, so I've been around this organization since about 2012. Okay. Wow, that's crazy. Well, what was it like to be around when your dad was involved with them? Man, uh, those guys are superheroes to me. You know, like being 9 to like 14 years old, like, to me, those guys could do anything, so it was incredible, a blessing for sure. Can you talk a little bit about your time at Tascosa and, and you know, what it was like uh, to be part of that program? Um, also a blessing. Like We won a lot, but um, taught me how to work hard. There were, uh, there were times where like I felt like my lifting program was the hardest thing we had to go through. It came springtime, the boy was exhausted. <laughs> yeah, it was rough. And what, what was it like for you when you kind of heard that the, the Venom were going to be starting back up this year? Um, Surreal. I had been playing pro ball for two years at the time, which right before the season started, this would be my third year. Um, surreal, man. Like, my father passed away a couple years ago, so it was, uh, it was a blessing to re- for the coaching staff to reach out to me and want me to be a part of the organization because then it gave me the opportunity to play in front of my family in my dad's number. So it was uh, super surreal. And what's it been like so far getting going for you guys and, you know, really getting the uh, first practices under your belt? <laughs> uh, brutally honest, it's been grueling. Yeah. It's been a lot of long hours, a lot of uh, tweaked hammies and overuse injuries just because it's hard work. But um, it's been a blessing. And just what's it been like getting familiar with, you know, some of the new coaches, uh, new teammates, things like that? Um, incredible. You got guys from everywhere. Really teaches you a lot of culture from across the country. We got guys from... Jersey, Houston, Iowa, um, Missouri, California, Alaska. So it's uh, it's um, makes you broaden your horizons a little bit. And so, what are your, some of your goals this season, just in terms of you know what you want to accomplish? Just win a championship. Can't be a me guy. Where's he at? Me guy. No me guys. No me guys. You a me guy or a we guy? We guys. See, it's all about we guys. And just talk to me a little bit about just how exciting it was just to get that first game under your guys' belt as well last week. Um, it was exciting, but business is business. And uh, defensively, we didn't feel like we handled business the way we wanted to. So we went back to the drawing board. We went to the conference table, you know, with all the board members, you know what I'm saying? And we got it done. So this week will be a cleaner product. And obviously, like you said, you know, this isn't kind of so new to you in terms of being part of the Venom and being part of this style of football, but how does it differ from, you know, what you're used to, the style you're used to playing in high school? Um, it's faster because the field is smaller. There's less people. Um, there's concepts like uh, receivers can be moving towards the line of scrimmage before the ball snaps. So uh, it's definitely an adjustment period. It's um, intricate in its own way. Like, I won't say it's more intricate than outdoor football, but it's just as intricate in different ways. And just last question for you, what's your message to the, the fans of the Venom this year? Man, we uh, we appreciate y'all's support. We hope it stays consistent because we're going to consistently put out a show for y'all. So make sure y'all are there in a the snake pit with fangs up. Okay. Well, great story from Trayvon John, uh, for sure, KJ. Absolutely. I mean, a uh, tremendous story of his father playing for the team and uh, really seemed to pour a lot of emotion into the fact that he now gets to don the Venom jersey as well. Yeah, that's a that's a cool story for sure. Another interesting uh, member of the Amarillo Venom is Z Robertson. If you watched last week's game, if you were here, he was a vital part of the Venom offense, who they definitely are missing tonight, unfortunately. Scored the first touchdown back in the Civic Center for the Venom. Certainly a momentous play. Yeah, absolutely. Let's hear uh, what he had to say. Get to know Z Robertson of the Amarillo Venom. 
We will continue our interviews with the Amarillo Venom football players with Z Robertson joining us, the wide receiver for the team. Once again, I want to mention we will have the broadcast of the second game of the season for the Amarillo Venom uh, on right here on News Channel 10 to 6 o'clock on Sunday. Z, thanks so much for coming on the show and taking the time to interview with us. So, Z, I want to just talk to you some of the same things we touched on with Dalton, but uh, just talk to us about you know where you played before coming to Amarillo and, and what the process has been like for you of you know staying in football. Yeah. Uh, so I've been going into my fourth year. Yeah. Um, I've, I played in uh, Des Moines, Iowa for the Quad City Steam Wheelers. Yeah. I played in Bismarck, uh, North Dakota. And then two years ago, my most recent season was uh, in Rapid City, South Dakota for the Marshals. And so talk to me a little bit. You mentioned, you know, that was your most recent season uh, two years ago. What was kind of the process from there, you know, uh, kind of, you know, ending that season, taking a little bit of time before coming to Amarillo? Yeah, I mean, there was a, a time, in, you know, where I wasn't sure what the football was going to bring for yeah. me. Um, and then, you know, Coach Krantz and their coaching staff reached out to me and, uh, you know, wanted me to come play for them. Yeah. Um, it was, I felt like a great opportunity, you knowing Coach Krantz. Uh, he has a great record, uh, especially for offense. Yeah. Um, so as a receiver, you know, you love to be where there's going to be a lot of points scored. Yeah. So the way they were uh, kind, of, kind of portraying the offense and everything, I, I, it was a no-brainer to come out here and join some of these some of these great talent guys that we have here. Well, there certainly was a lot of points scored. We touched on with Dalton, 82 points in the first game. Just talk to me about what it was like just getting on the field and uh, just getting to, you know, I mean, be, be part of that crazy offensive performance. Yeah, I mean, to open up the game with the first touchdown was yeah. an honor. You know, yeah. kind, of, kind of got the crowd going. Yeah. Um, you know, and then it, we kind of just kept pouring it on. Um, we came out with intensity. That was the biggest thing we wanted. The coach wanted us was just just get going. You know, don't let our foot off the gas. You know, yeah. um, we got championship aspirations for this team. So, you know, we got to start off with game one. We got to set the tone, set the intensity for everybody, offense, defense, even special teams. Um, so I feel like we definitely did that um, by winning. You know, by 50 plus points. That was the kind of goal coach wanted us for week one. So we did that for him. So, you know, it was a great start to the season, I'll say that. And just talk to me a little bit about what it was like, just kind of the atmosphere. Obviously, you know, the fans still kind of filing in and, and learning that, you know, the Venom are back and a lot of people really excited to, to have arena football because just like you said, you know, it's been a few years uh, out of the game. The Venom, you know, have had a few years here where they haven't been able to get on the field. Uh, just how cool was it to kind of be part of that that first game back? Actually, to your point, uh, I actually know the quarterback, David Perkins, yeah. who was here on the championship team uh, two years ago. Yeah. So uh, he kind of gave me some insight on what the community is all about. Um, he basically said, if you win, the community's going to love you, you know. So, yeah. you know, we kind of saw that. Yeah. Um, it wasn't a sellout crowd, but it was still very, you know, very packed in there. Yeah. And uh, they show support, you know, that they, they want to be here and they yeah. want to support a winning team. And, uh, you know, we're here to bring that for them this, this year. So, Z Robertson, I know you had an interesting interview with him, Got a, a, enjoyed getting to know him a little bit. And did he give you permission to show those bloopers? He did not. I, if anything, <laughs> I think he might have been a little upset about it. But that's all right. Yeah. I, you know, I, I love talking to those guys and uh, credit to them for coming out to the station, uh, talking with us. It was great to pick their brains about yeah. uh, playing for the Venom so far. Just would have liked to get to know them on the field a little bit so far today if we were able to. Yeah, absolutely. Again, Venom without the services of Z. Robertson here in this game and several uh, from last week that are out with injuries. They've had some sickness as well. So uh, it has been a rough week, and uh, it's kind of been a rough first half. 34-14, the halftime score. The Columbus Lions leading over the Amarillo Venom. We'll take a timeout on our halftime show, and we'll come back with the first half highlights right after this on the Texas Panhandle Sports Network and News Channel 10 2. Looking for the best buying experience? Greg Larry Buick GMC has it all. With our $2,000 best price guarantee on all new vehicles, our free lifetime powertrain warranty on all new and used vehicles, all of our customer reviews and testimonials, why go anywhere else? We now have 1.9% interest on half-ton Sierras for 72 months, and finally a great selection of heavy duties and Yukons. Come see us today. I'm Greg Larry, and I personally guarantee you this will be the best buying experience you've ever had. If you want a hip and groovy spot to pursue your success, look no further than the campuses of Amarillo College. For over 90 years, AC has been educating for the future. So pursue your passion here, where success is timeless. 
We live united and we realize that this community is bigger than us and the needs in this community are bigger than just the needs that we serve. By living united, you're really getting more bang for your buck because you're helping so many programs that help individuals in these families that we can come together and say, look what the community has done. We've all come together to help this family. You know, we'll concentrate on kids, somebody concentrate on food, somebody concentrate on elderly, but we all come together just to serve the people in our community. Hello, I'm Corey with Children's Brothers. Your home is one of your biggest assets and foundation problems can put that asset at risk. But there's good news. Our 27 point foundation analysis can help you protect your investment. We'll identify the root cause of the problem and present you with the most effective solutions. Our word of bond warranty means we stand by our work, ensuring your peace of mind. Don't wait, call now for your free analysis. Children's Brothers Foundation Repair. Tuesday is Taconazo at Braceros. For $2 each, you can get your taco with al pastor, shrimp, carnitas, chicken fajita, ground beef, and shredded chicken. Also, fight the heat with a margarita or michelazo. Get your $2 taco here at Braceros on 6th Street and downtown. Stay up to date on what's going on in your corner of the panhandle with the News Channel 10 News app. Keep up with the stories that affect you and live coverage of your favorite local teams. Scan the QR code and download the News Channel 10 News app today. Back here at the Amarillo Civic Center, Mike Roden along with K.J. Doyle. Amarillo Benham trailing here at halftime, 34-14 to the defending AIF champion, the Columbus Lions, looking very strong here in this opening half. Benham had some moments. Right now, let's take a look at uh, some of those highlights. Uh, K.J. Doyle with the first half. Well, in the first half, Ramon Deloach was a lot to deal with. All these Lions receivers were, but you see him all of 6'5", just tough for anyone to match up with a receiver with that kind of size, that kind of strength. The Venom did what they could, but just the Lions defense was all over the field, flying around, taking them down behind the line of scrimmage constantly. Meanwhile, the offense just kept on flying high. Great catch, pass and catch there to set them up. Ewing was huge throughout the first half for the Lions. And here, another one of those touchdowns. The Lions offense just dominating. Brown there in the end zone for Columbus. Meanwhile, Amarillo trying to get going. That pass rush was after Cole, but a tremendous catch in the back of the end zone from Rodney Pierre. That was certainly the highlight of the first half, along with a kick return for the Venom. But the Lions offense could not get a touchdown on that drive. That was a huge pick. One of the few bright spots in the first half for the Venom defense. D. Reese coming away with that interception. Almost came away Almost. with a second, but yeah. Ewing got another touchdown, and Ewing was far from done in this first half for the Lions. Again, one of the other few bright spots, they were able to stop this extra point after a penalty. A big time sack there on the extra point from DeMorion Bro, but it was the Lions continuing to put on a show, and look at this move from Ewing to spin the Amarillo Venom defender around and get right into the end zone. Certainly a highlight worthy grab. The Lions up big, 34 to 14. And we want to see some more of those highlights from the Venom offense here in the second half. Well, hopefully we will. Uh, we'll see what the second half has in store. We need our final break and we'll come back and we'll see uh, again if the Venom can get things going here in half number two. 34 14, your halftime score, the Lions over the Venom on the Texas Panhandle Sports Network and News Channel 10 2. Tuesday is Taconazo at Braceros. For $2 each, you can get your taco with al pastor, shrimp, carnitas, chicken fajita, ground beef, and shredded chicken. Also, fight the heat with a margarita or michelazo. Get your $2 taco here at Braceros on 6th Street and downtown. Introducing Ortega's Lawn Care Service. Need a lawn makeover? We know lawn care. Whether you're planting, trimming, or just need routine maintenance, we do it all. Your lawn deserves the best. Your lawn transformed. Don't wait. Get a quote today. We're here for you. Your journey to a beautiful lawn starts here. Call us today at 806-341-0004. Let's get started. Call us today at 806-341-0004. So I went ahead and bought it. Ever since I did, people ask me where I got it. Bobby Dube, sold it to me. Bobby Dube, sold it to me. She's you, but she's a beauty. Bobby Dube, sold it to me. He sent me a lot of money, had a lot for me to choose. If you stop in, you'll be saying it too. Bobby Dube, sold it to me. Bobby Dube, sold it to me. Oh, she's you, but she's a beauty. Bobby Dube, sold it to me. 
You've got enough going on. Worrying about drinking water shouldn't be one. Get Aqua One Premium Water Delivered. Five gallon bottles are by the case. Stay safe. We'll deliver to your home with no contact front door delivery. Aqua One uses ozone filtration to provide the best and safest drinking water. By the case or by five gallon bottle to your front door with no contact delivery. Stay home. Stay safe. Order online at drinkaquaone.com or call Aqua One for delivery. Exceptional Emergency Center is here for Texans 24 hours a day. With three convenient locations in Amarillo, you'll never have to wait like at traditional healthcare facilities. Exceptional Emergency Center, providing a full range of medical emergency care and COVID-19 testing and treatment on site. Get immediate access to board certified doctors and state-of-the-art treatment and imaging options with ease. Exceptional Emergency Center. Visit eer24.com. Tuesday is Taconazo at Braceros. For $2 each, you can get your taco with al pastor, shrimp, carnitas, chicken fajita, ground beef, and shredded chicken. Also, fight the heat with a margarita or michelazo. Get your $2 taco here at Braceros on 6th Street in downtown. Well, teams coming out of the locker room, just about ready to get this third quarter underway. And I'll tell you, KJ, one of the... Lions players that I've definitely been impressed with. You talked about uh, Ewing, the receiver, and, and some others in those highlights, but uh, boy, their quarterback has played outstanding. Uh, uh, Brooks, uh, ha he's a big quarterback, uh, yeah. over six feet tall, 230 pounds, and, and honestly, the Venom haven't been able to get much pressure on him, and he's kind of picked them apart. Yeah, absolutely, and you know, almost when he started the game, you started to think that this was, you know, a, a guy that maybe was just going to be hard to bring down. Maybe they'd have some sort of power running offense to, to uh, work on and to take advantage of the speed, the strength that this this quarterback had. But he's just been making smart throws all day long. He's been finding what the Amarillo Venom defense has been giving him, finding wide open receivers, and the Venom defense has to do a better job of making him kind of wait another beat, have, have, make those decisions a little more difficult because he has had some easy throws he's been able to make yeah. throughout this first half. He certainly has had several wide open receivers, and he's done a nice job to hit those open receivers. But, yeah, some adjustments definitely need to be made on both sides of the football for the Amarillo Venom here in the second half. So we'll see what happens and as you see some of the players coming out of the locker room. I want to remind you about one of our sponsors here on the Texas Panhandle Sports Network and News Channel 10 too, helping to make our coverage of Amarillo Venom possible. Ruiz window and door replacement. Are your windows and doors causing outside air or rainwater to leak inside your home? Well, don't wait. It's uh, don't wait until it's too late. Contact them now on Facebook for your free estimate. Ruiz replaces all windows, exterior, and storm doors as well as pet doors. That's Ruiz window and door replacement. And, Mike, I did see our, our uh, friend there we just heard from in the interview, Z Robertson, coming out of the locker room. Has his jersey on, but otherwise in street clothes, so we won't see him here today. But uh, right now in the, the back of the, uh, the Venom's little box there, uh, just kind of trying to get his teammates pumped up and, and going, maybe dealing with a little bit of an injury himself, but hopefully well, we'll see him back out there soon. And another receiver that uh, caught a touchdown pass last week, Khalil Stewart, he is out uh, for this game as well. We mentioned uh, Chris Jones is on the injured list. Dalton James, who started at running back last week for the Venom, out in this one as well. So and there might be a quick, you know, instinct reaction as, as uh, you know, many, many fans would have, I'm sure, if people watching would think, you know, maybe should the Venom try something different on, on offense? Should they give, you mentioned that, that the quarterback, Caleb Love, got some reps in, in week one. Should they give him a shot? But I would say, Mike, that the offensive struggles can't all be placed on the shoulders of Dalton Cole. We've talked about who they're missing on offense yeah. this week, and I, I would just help fans to reserve judgment maybe on Cole's performance, knowing how limited he's been and how limited the time he's had to work with the current offensive weapons has been. Well, and he's had to run for his life. Uh, he's been under pressure pretty much the entire first half on every offensive possession. Here is Ewing taking the kickoff at the two-yard line for the Lions, looking for an opening. Starts right and back left now, up the middle of the field and finally wrestled down short of midfield. And already we've got a skirmish breaking out. Saw all kinds of that sort of thing in the first half between these two teams. 
And a good job by the Venom to bottle this up. We've seen how dangerous Ewing can be and how much explosiveness he has, but the Venom create a crowd, make it hard for him to make much out of that return, but still gets up close to midfield, and that's pretty good field position, pretty good starting field position for the Lions. And yep. we'll see what kind of show their offense is ready to put on here in the second half after some tremendous plays in the first half to put them up by 20. Josh Jackson finally wrestled into the turf, but as KJ said, in good starting position for the Lions. Marcus Brooks, the quarterback, big, strong quarterback, takes the snap, kind of bobbled it. He will throw, and it's short, but well, the catch looks like it's made inside the five-yard line. Diving for it was who else but D'Amico Ewing. And he comes up with the reception inside the five. What a tremendous play from Ewing. The adjustment he has to make on this ball that's just a little bit short. Again, a pretty good throw, too. I want to give a little well, bit of credit to Brown, the quarterback, who makes sure that one's away from the defense and just a, a great quarterback-receiver connection there, making sure that's in a spot where only his receiver can get to it. He kind of bobbled the snap. I thought maybe he didn't get a good grip on the ball when he threw it because it kind of came out funny. Yeah. But, you know, there was Ewing to scoop it up. Brooks under center now. And takes the snap again. Has oh. some trouble with the snap, but it doesn't matter. Wide open over the middle of the field is J.C. Newman for an easy Lions touchdown. Not the way the Venom wanted to start this second half. Just too easy there for the Lions to get into the end zone and get that touchdown on the board. Now going up 26 pending the extra point. And you almost wonder if they were caught a little bit off guard by the formation the Lions came with there to get that touchdown. But doesn't make it feel any better to be going down 40 to 14 here and we'll just see what kind of things that the Venom offense can sort of put together that's what you really want to focus on just have a good drive Rice and Richardson out of the hold of the man who just caught that touchdown pass JC Newman Richardson's extra point kick right down the middle so again tough start for the Venom to this third quarter Lions now lead it 41 to 14 Ortega's Lawn Care Service, your one-stop shop for all of your outdoor needs. You can find us on Facebook or call 341-0004. That's Ortega's Lawn Care Service. Well, Mike, obviously we've talked about the fact that the Venom struggled a little bit offensively, but a good chance now here in the third quarter to turn things around. Some of the rules here in uh, this American Indoor Football League that the Venom uh, are in uh, placed and centered above each line, dash or board the goalposts. They're 10 feet off the ground, 10 feet wide. And then we've uh, talked as well about uh, that last uh, part. Any live ball that touches an overhead structure is dead. We saw that on the rafters earlier, uh, but does not negate uh, what any action that had taken place prior to the dead ball. So a little bit of explanation there. Uh, again, we talked about the Uno kick really hard in this uh, Civic Center Coliseum because of the uh, place of the rapture of uh, rapt uh, rafters <laughs> not the rapture but the rafters uh, down pretty low and pretty hard to kick that far uh, to get uh, a kick through the uprights from the other end of the field so don't know if we'll ever see an uno of that type here in Amarillo but should would be impressive if we do see it well certainly I think some of these kickers might have the leg for it yeah, based on what we've seen so I far in but it's like you mentioned it's got to be low it's got to be Perfect. So we'll see what the Venom can do here. I, I'm curious to see if the Lions are, are going to allow the Venom to maybe get a spark from their return man. Go for an onside kick that takes a high hop, and it's covered by the Venom on the far side of the field. Good alert play by Zachary Atkinson. And guess what? We have extracurricular activities out on the field and flags flying everywhere. We haven't seen many of those in this game. Oh, gosh, no. <laughs> Really shocked by that. A bit of sarcasm. It, there's the onside kick. It took a big hop, and again, it bounces off the dasher board, so still a live football at that point. The officials seem to be trying to sort this out, maybe a little bit of confusion as far as what the call needs to be. Seems like it's going against the Lions. Maybe some sort of illegal formation on the kick. Play offside kicking team number 12. That penalty will be enforced. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct number 16 kicking team. 
his first of the game. That penalty will also be enforced. First down, Amarillo Venom. So. I believe that's the fifth unsportsmanlike conduct penalty we've seen against the Lions in this game. Wow, that is a lot. And again, just in one possession in particular, really helped keep the Venom drive going and ended up in a touchdown for Amarillo along with the opening kickoff, which went for a score by Siobhan Richardson. And boy, it sure has since that early excitement with that kickoff return to start the game, it has kind of gone downhill from there for the Venom on offense. They did get that one scoring drive, but that has been it so far. Now the Lions back on offense deep in their own territory now, just inside the 10. And the Venom defense definitely looking for a stop. Or check it, the uh, Lions defense looking for a stop. Got my teams mixed up there. First down pass. Good catch. Trying to find some room after was Rodney Pierre. Well, Mike, you have to imagine part of the reason that the Lions were so comfortable with trying an onside kick was because their defense has been playing so well in this Absolutely. game. That they feel like no matter where the Venom get it on the field, they can potentially get a stop. So I imagine that factored into the Lions thinking and going for the onside kick here. Now the penalties uh, don't exactly help that cause, putting them even closer to the goal line. But the Venom, if you're the Venom at this point, you got to ignore those elements of it. Just try to punch a score in and get yourself back into this game. Maurice contact Dallas in the backfield with the Venom quarterback. Alton Cole takes the snap, throws into the end zone, and it's incomplete. And I think that was Rodney Pierre, the intended receiver. Couldn't quite come up with it, and good coverage defensively by James Gray of the Lions. Great coverage by Gray on this one. I mean, Cole tried to fit it in there, but just nowhere to go. Tremendous use of your hands as a defensive back to punch that one away. Uh, yeah. and Looks like he might have even gotten a hand in there to deflect it, so you're yes. right. Great coverage on the play. Absolutely, and that's what the Lions have shown all game long is an ability to make it difficult on this Venom offense, and now you had first and goal at the nine-yard line to start this drive, and trying to pick up a yard here at least on this drive and try to punch in a touchdown. Cole out of the shotgun, takes the snap. Here comes the pressure. He steps up, lets it go, and it's intercepted at the two-yard line. And that is Marte Deers and a flag at the end of the play as well. Deers involved in a lot of action tonight. Some good, as we saw right there for his team, but some not so good on a couple of penalties. Well, Cole, again, facing pressure, just trying to get rid of it. And great coverage on the back end from the Lions. No one was open. No. And it really speaks to the talent that this Lions is an defense has, that they've been able the to return, get a legal block in the back. Number four, perfect intercepting team. The penalties have the distance to the goal. First down, Columbus Lions. So a penalty there on the Lions will back them up. But as I was saying, just the ability to – Pressure the quarterback, which they've done on it seemingly every down every pass defensively, play, yeah. and have perfect coverage on the back end. It makes it incredibly difficult. And if we've learned one thing today, it is exactly why this team has been crowned champions the last few years here. Yeah, they look like they are chomping at the bit for another. And the Venom haven't had many answers so far tonight. Still plenty of time left, though. Just over 10 minutes to go in this third quarter. Not Brooks in there at quarterback this time as that one is just thrown away, but J.C. Newman lofting that pass down the field incomplete. And a great catch on that play from the fan in the front row. Just what a grab, just great job securing it with both hands, doing, doing the, the real traditional you know, traditional approach there on that catch. You got to give him credit. I wonder if he gets to keep the football. Though. That's yeah, my no, good question. Nobody's come to get it so far, so maybe so. Second down and ten. Lines at the five-yard line. Newman under center, running back to his left. Just Kimbrough. And under some pressure, he sidesteps a would-be tackler, then slips through another tackler. 
And down right around the 15-yard line, which should be enough, it looks like, for a first down. And that was almost trouble for the Lions as it seemed like the Venom were going to get the sack and maybe in the area of a safety it would have been close, but just a tremendous juke move to get out of there and then showing off the speed yeah. to pick up the first down. Or close to, oh, they did give him the first down. Trayvon John came streaking up the middle. I think that's who it was. And very nearly had Newman wrapped up, but showed his elusiveness to get away. And it is a first and 10 just across the 15-yard line. Newman takes the snap and will drop back to pass. Throws deep. Receiver trying to make an adjustment for the ball, could not do it. And it goes incomplete, looking for Ewing again, who's been a thorn in the side of the Venom tonight. A little bit of contact there. It seemed like just kind of a, a bit of a miscommunication between the quarterback and the receiver there, that pass. Uh, not too well in the vicinity of uh, both the uh, Ewing or Emerald defensive back to try to make a play on it. So it seems like the, the Lions offense not quite as in a rhythm as we saw them in the first half. And the Venom certainly be a welcome sight for them if they can try to take advantage here and force a turnover on downs or some sort of turnover and get the offense back on the field. Just give them another chance to try to get something going. Second and 10 at the 16 for Columbus. Ewing with a lot of time, lets it go, but it's underthrown and picked off inside the 10-yard line. Coming down with that, Devante, Devante Tinsley for the Venom, and they get a much-needed turnover. And, Mike, I think the big question there is, is why J.C. Newman is in at quarterback right now for the Lions. It appears that they've decided to, to go away from Marcus Brooks. The question Number is... Number 56 offense. That penalty is declined. First down, Amarillo Venom, timeout on the field. Well, and again, Tinsley with the pick. So with 7.16 to go in this third quarter of play, we've got a timeout. It's Columbus leading the Amarillo Venom 41 to 14. I'm calling Patrick. Do you think you can still fix it? Yes, ma'am. We can fix electric fast. Great. When can you be here? Hi, I'm from Patrick. Patrick Electric. When you need help fast, call us. We strive for same-day service and offer 24-hour emergency service. Patrick Electric. Hartman Roofing specializes in doing the job right. Don't settle for less than you deserve. Roof damage left unrepaired will lead to more costly repairs over time. Before you file a claim, call Hartman Roofing for a free evaluation. Don't make a costly mistake. Call Hartman Roofing, 372-8510 if you think you have roof damage. It's important to act quickly. Unrepaired roof damage can lead to costly water damage. Call Hartman Roofing today. If you have a love for the games, you'll love Texas Panhandle Sports Network's local sports coverage. TPSN brings you the best local sports coverage in the Panhandle. The hardest hits, the biggest plays, and latest scores. Every win, every loss, and every nail-biting finish all in one place. Catch the action anytime at TPSNSports.com or the TPSN mobile app on iPhone and Android. The Texas Panhandle Sports Network, the best choice for local sports. So we go back to play as the Venom, we go back to play, the Venom leading, uh, I'm sorry, trailing 41 to 14, we but wish they have the ball. We yeah, thought, wishful thinking. Yeah, yeah, wishful thinking for the Venom, but. First down and 10 from the nine yard line and the completed pass on the far side of the field. Coming up with that one is Zachary Atkinson. And a nice throw from Dalton Cole. Didn't have a defender breathing down his neck and put it on target for a first down. They'll go hurry up here as they try to get a little bit of a rhythm. Cole faces the pressure this time from the backside, and he is dropped for the quarterback sack by DeAndre Brown. And Cole just slow to get up there. Doesn't look like he's 
really actively injured, but just has taken so many hits in this game. He's got to be feeling it just a little bit. And I was going to say on that last play, a positive thing for the Venom. You want to see more of those. Yeah. More of those just 10-yard outs. Atkinson, one of the receivers on this roster that was there last week for the team and has been able to come back. You, you hope that him and Cole would have a little bit more of a rapport just to have developed some sort of comfortability with each other. And you want to see more of those just quick completions for the Venom. You don't need it all in one play. Just try to get something going to get some chunk yardage, get some first downs, and get things rolling. See what they can do on second down at 16 now. Zips that pass to a receiver on the far side. Once again, Atkinson with the catch. That was a rocket. It was, from wasn't it? Dalton Cole showing off the arm strength a little bit. Atkinson, a nice job just corralling that one in. But the Venom now still in a, a tough position. Third and 14 after the sack really backed him up. So you like those. I, you know, I like to see those quick completions, but they're going to need a couple more of those if they're going to pick up the first down and keep this drive rolling. Right now, a, a good opportunity to try to get back in this game with the Lions offense looking less than less than uh, unbeatable like they did in the first half to start this second half. Trayvon John in at running back in front of the quarterback. Cole has it bounced to him and then flags and whistles. Looks like they're motioning for a false start. False start. Number four, offense. Five-yard penalty. It's third down. Well, we again got the intercepted pass and then a completed pass on first down and uh, they just haven't been able to sustain that consistency. And that was Rodney Pierre, who, of course, we saw make that tremendous catch in the end zone. The, the, one of the real few highlights for the Venom, really the, the biggest highlight for them on offense so far today. So uh, just needing to clean up a few of those things, certainly going into next week if you're the Venom. Few, few fewer penalties on offense. Make sure everybody's a, a, little, bit, a little bit more tightened up in terms of those uh, those tiny details that you need to make sure are, are right on a week-to-week -week basis. And pressure again from the backside. And just as before, it's DeAndre Brown with the quarterback sack. And the Venom headed in the wrong direction. And, you know, I, I hate to say it at this point, but Dalton Cole has to let that one go. And it, it wasn't as if there was any receiver wide open down the field. It was great coverage again from the Lions, but if Cole just takes a little bit off of it, maybe could have gave Pierre a chance around the 20, 15 yard line and do what we saw at the beginning of the, the first half for the Lions. Remember that great completion yes. to Ewing down the field? You yep. know, you'd say a little bit underthrown, but that was really a, a great placement on the ball as much as it was underthrown because it was Ewing was the only one that can get to it. If you could do a little bit of, uh, of the same sort of thing, if you were Cole there is the Venom are going to go for it now. Why not here in the second half? Yeah, absolutely. Fourth and 23 as they're backed up to the six-yard line. Cole's got to find some time. He steps up now and lets it go deep. Has a man down there. It's caught. Touchdown, Venom. There was a flag on the play, though, Mike, back behind the line of scrimmage. So he might have to check the penalty on that touchdown. Siobhan Richardson. But hold everything. Flag back near the goal line, flag at midfield. And the one behind the goal line came out pretty early. I have to wonder if it was in, in, the, in the area of a legal formation for the Venom. So it looks like Venom are going to celebrate the touchdown. And uh, it appears as though maybe the Venom think this one is going to stay. Out on the play, illegal defense. Both linebackers went into coverage prior to the play action. Uh, illegal, illegal formation defense. The defensive end was outside the guard. Both penalties are declined. Result of the play, touchdown. Wow. Well, just a great, a great bit of protection. Finally, it holds up. Cole's able to find the perfect spot to let that ball go and just let his receiver beat his man over the top. Perfect throw and catch. Might be the best throw we've seen of the day from Dalton Cole. His receiver had a step. We saw an opportunity to hit one of those in the first half. Cole just overthrew him just a little bit that time, perfectly on target for his receiver to get the Venom on the board here in the second half. Wow, beautifully executed play. Yeah, we would definitely like to see more of that. Uh, that's Dalton Cole when he has time to throw. Now, he was flushed out initially, but he stepped up and then let that one fly. And just a 
picture perfect throw hitting Richardson on the run. Two point conversion try. Trayvon John in the backfield with the quarterback. Cole wants to throw, looks right. Now comes back left, and it's high and picked off in the end zone. And he'll go down right around the six yard line. Should be blown dead rather quickly. So he kind of hit off the side there, but. Getting that uh, pick was Kai Griswold. And so that thwarts the two point attempt by the Venom with 2.35 left to go in this third quarter. It's 41 to 20. The Lions lead the Venom on the Texas Panhandle Sports Network and News Channel 10 2. So think about this light travels 93 million miles from the sun to reach your eye, it's bent, focused and transmitted into electrical impulses. Those signals are then decoded by the brain into colors, patterns, and the three-dimensional images that build the world around you. Vision is the result of your eyes and your brain working together. So use your brain and let us take care of your eyes. Are you tired and fed up with folks just kicking tires? Are you worried about strangers coming into your home and not really interested in buying? We, we can, can help. help. We make selling your home, your car, or the entire contents of a business painless. It's effortless, fast, and profitable using competitive bidding. Call us at Acid Auctioneers for a free, that's free, no obligation visit to learn how fast and easy it can be to get things sold at auction. Cracks in walls? Sticking doors? Panhandle Foundation Repair provides a lifetime transferable warranty on your foundation repair. As long as the house is around, the owner and foundation are covered. Call Panhandle Foundation Repair for the best foundation repair warranty in the business. 373-4000. Panhandle Foundation Repair is the choice when it comes to your home's foundation because of their lifetime transferable warranty on foundation repair. 373-4000. Well, 2.36 left to play in this third quarter, and finally, it's been a while. It's kind of the drought is broken on the scoring for the Venom. Here's this beautiful touchdown pass. And you mentioned it, Cole got flushed out a little bit, but did a great job just kind of recreating that pocket, stepping up and finding his receiver. It's to make a throw like that on the run, you talk about, I mean, you're talking about a 40, 42 yard throw roughly in terms of air yardage, and uh, Cole put it right on the money there and when the Venom needed it. I mean, backed up yeah. against their own goal line, wasn't looking good. They ever really get a little bit of saved by a, a penalty, uh, but I mean, Cole taking advantage of, of what the, the defense gave him there, and uh, those deep throws are going to be the bread and butter of this Venom offense this season, so they, you, need it, you need to connect on those. Here is the kick. Will be fielded right at the goal line. Ewing's got a lane. And look out. He's loose again. Finally runs out of room as he's knocked out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. Well, Ewing at a, at a your neck of the woods, Memphis, or I guess it's probably a different Memphis than, probably than you're used probably to. Probably the other Memphis, well, not, not the real one. Likely the other Memphis, not yeah. Memphis, Texas, where no. Mike Roden calls home. But... Ewing, he's shown a lot today in terms of the kind of athleticism that got him to play at Memphis. And we can see certainly that he's been, if not the best player on the field, one of the best players. Now my question now uh, for this, uh, this Lions team, and it looks like the question will be answered, that Marcus Brooks <laughs> is back at quarterback. Uh, you wondered if J.C. Newman playing was just to, to get him some reps, but not taking any chances now. Quick toss comes to the near side. Brooks right back to work where he left off. That pass complete to Jarman Furtson as he takes it along the boards. And a good first down gain of about, let's see, where did they spot it down? About the eight-yard line, seven, eight-yard line, I guess. And I have to imagine might not be the last we see of J.C. Newman at quarterback in this game. It seemed as though the Lions wanted to get him some reps up so big. And after the interception and the Venom touchdown, they decide, well, let's go back to our old reliable Marcus Brooks back there at quarterback and try to make sure we really put this game away. Marcus Brooks is a little bigger, but he reminds me of Julian Reese, the former Amarillo Venom quarterback, just in his stature and the way he controls the game arm strength, all those things. He lofts that one into the end zone. It's taken away. Wow, what an interception. Looked like it was going to be a touchdown pass. How about that? 
And credit Devontae Tinsley, his second interception of the second half. Well, the Venom certainly making big plays on defense. Doesn't matter who's a quarterback, I guess. The Venom defense is just in a bit of a rhythm. You're right. It just looked like for the Lions, it was Jarman Fetson who mistimed his jump because the ball was there. If he just times that correctly, he has a touchdown, but he's coming down once the ball finally gets to him, and that gives the Venom just enough time to get in there and make that play for the interception, just taking it away, as you mentioned, taking a touchdown off the board, and maybe that's the momentum swing that the Venom needed in this game. You know, they're only down by 21, and in the indoor game, that's not a lot. Let's see what they can do before we get too far ahead of ourselves. Dalton Cole takes a low snap. Here comes the blitz. He sidesteps the defender and then makes something out of nothing as he might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage or maybe not quite. But that looked like it was going to be disastrous. And we've seen the Venom have a little bit of trouble with the snap throughout the course of this game. That's something that they've, for whatever reason, has, has caused them some issues, just getting that snap off clean, and it came up there as well. Number two defense lined up outside the guard. Five-yard penalty. It's first down. Well, that'll sure benefit the Venom instead of a loss on the play. Got a first and ten. We've mentioned this pressure that Cole's had to face in this game. That was maybe some of the best wow. that we've seen of him as far as trying to evade that pressure. As We'll see if they can get this snap off before the third quarter ends. Nope, not going to quite make it. Well, quarter. Venom not quite dead yet. They still trail the Columbus Lions, the defending league champions. But it's now 41-20, to 20, and the Venom with the ball when we come back for the start of the fourth quarter. We'll be back after this on the Texas Panhandle Sports Network and News Channel 10. Tuesday is Taconazo at Braceros. For $2 each, you can get your taco with al pastor, shrimp, carnitas, chicken fajita, ground beef, and shredded chicken. Also, fight the heat with a margarita or michelazo. Get your $2 taco here at Braceros on 6th Street and downtown. We know how big sports are here in the Panhandle. Really was a thriller here. Maybe the best game of the high school football season. Which is why we have the biggest sports team in the Panhandle. News Channel 10 Sports, the best source for local sports. This is Dalton Cole, quarterback of the Venom, and you're watching us on News 10. One quarter to play here in regulation of this AIF matchup between the Amarillo Venom and the Columbus Lions. Not quite done yet, 41 to 20. Final 15 minutes coming up. And some signs of life, KJ, they're late in the third quarter from the Venom. Certainly, and the defense has been making plays. You made note of the interceptions that they've been able to get in this second half and really slowing down this Lions offensive attack. So a lot of room left to go for the Venom. They're going to need at least three scores to get back into this game. But a touchdown here, and you're in business. From the 15-yard line, Cole takes the snap. Steps up, goes deep, has a man, but runs out of room. Oh, that has to hurt. Hassan Brockman was at full speed, but is able to trot back to the huddle. And Cole was facing a little or bit of the pressure sideline. from the outside there. You see, and he was just trying to heave that one up deep, put everything he had on that football right to the table. <laughs> Can't be fun either. But Man, but great camera work coming throw, right at the camera. Throw just went a little bit far for Cole there, but it would have been a tough one to fit in there. Two defenders again for the Lions in the area. Not would not have been an easy completion. So second, <coughs> excuse me, second down and five for the Venom from the 15. Just underway here in quarter number four. Gauss is back in at running back. Oh. Another low snap and another flag and another completion over the middle. And Richardson looking for more running room as he slung backwards. Well, that had a lot of things going Nine, on. Number five defense in the neutral zone at the snap. That penalty is declined. The result of the play, first down. Well, it, it was about to be a 
nightmare when you look at how this pass rush just bolted in. But of course, false start was the reason for it. And it looked like Dalton uh, Cole was just trying to get rid of that one in any way he can. But what a completion facing basically a free rusher coming right up the middle before anyone has a chance to block him. And to make that throw uh, is, is really impressive. Absolutely. Just short of midfield, fresh set of downs for the Venom. Cole comes to the near side. That pass off the hands of Zachary Atkinson. Incomplete. Cole again looking for that short hitch to Atkinson, just a little high. And you can feel a little bit that Cole is just feeling rushed. That's a throw that he can make, just a quick yeah. little hitch route on the outside. But with the pressure the Lions have been able to get this game, he's kind of making sure he's getting rid of the football fast enough. And... That's causing these incompletions. From the 24, second down and 10. Pressure comes. He unloads it over the middle. Nice catch by Maurice Contact Douse. And in traffic, takes it for short yardage. Out to the 23. Not an easy grab. You heard the Lions uh, look like their coaching staff yelling out screen that it was coming. and uh, Not an easy grab as he was being crowded by one of the Lions defenders. Able to pick up a couple yards there, which you'll certainly take in, in this position on the field to make it third and a little bit more manageable. All the receivers to the near side of the field at the moment. And they'll stay to the near side of the field. Cole's throw comes to the near side. It's low. Did he hang on? He did, but just short of the first down marker. That's Richardson. Siobhan Richardson with the shoestring catch. You but mentioned it. Just a great catch from Richardson is that one had to be picked off the turf to come away with that one. And Time now out. Amarillo Veterans, their first. It's 30 seconds. And you have to wonder what the Venom will be drawn up in this timeout, knowing that it's really their first fourth and short of the game here, and what kind of we'll see from the coaching staff trying to be creative and make sure they pick this one up. Our game tonight brought to you in part by Ruiz Window and Door Replacement. Are your windows and doors causing outside air or rainwater to leak inside your home? Well, don't wait until it's too late. Contact us now on Facebook for your free estimate. Ruiz replaces all windows, exterior and storm doors, as well as pet doors. Ruiz window and door replacement. Well, definitely has been an entertaining game. These two teams, a lot of talent on both sides of the ball. Certainly. Right. And for the Venom, you know, I really think it's been impressive that they've been able to sort of hang in this game with, with what they've had to work with offensively. And can have a chance to cut it to just two touchdowns, the deficit here against the reigning champs in the fourth quarter. Need to convert here on fourth down and two, and it's a bad snap that's fumbled forward, and unfortunately for the Venom, it will belong to the Lions either way. And with the recovery, uh, again, didn't really need to make it, but Ken Washington jumps on that loose ball. Well, it could have been a little bit of a, a fumble rooski there, Mike, yep, if, yep. if the Venom had picked it up with only a couple yards to go, and you almost wonder if there would have been some sort of a well, penalty there if the Venom were able to recover with them knocking the ball forward. Brockman was right there, but he just couldn't get there in time to beat Washington to the football. And so, again, promising drive by the Venom stalls. Now the defense is going to have to come up with another stop. And it's something we've talked about throughout the course of the game, and we've brought up more in this, this second half, just the trouble with the snap. They've had a, a few of those Big here today. Big troubles tonight, yeah. handful of plays where just the snap has been – uh, off for whatever reason between Cole and his lineman. Brooks under center and flags and whistles before the play. We'll back up the Lions for five yards. Prior to the snap, false start, number 12 offense, five yard penalty, it's first down. This Lions offense has not been the same offense that we saw in the first half. Really, both of these teams. We saw this uh, high-flying first half, 48 points put up on the board between the two teams. So far here in the second half, only 13 points combined in so, so far dipping into the fourth quarter here. A little bit surprising. And, and as good as the Lions' offense and defense, for that matter, looked in the first half, we forget this is their first game of the season. Yes. So that obviously makes a difference as well. Second game for the Venom. Brooks looks, goes to the far side of the field and has a man. 
And he's out of bounds just short of the 20 yard line. Catch made there by Roman Deloach. And we have to give some credit to the Lions offensive line because for the most part today, they've given Brooks time to throw and uh, they've provided some great protection against this Venom pass rush. Haven't been able to disrupt much in terms of that, that Lions passing game. And I feel like that's been a, a huge key to why they're ahead right now. Yeah, I agree. They have been pretty stout up front. Second down and five. Ball at the 18-yard line. Quick toss to the near side, complete. And big yardage heading down the sideline with the catch is Fertzen again. Nothing fancy there, just a little short, quick pass and follow your blockers down the field well, for just a first down. Great play design. And for as much as we've seen Ewing be the person that makes the plays with the ball in his hands, he made a great block on that screen to free his teammate up. And, pick up that first down and will be interesting to see now if the Lions can get some points on the board. It's been a while since we've seen them punch in a touchdown and certainly they'll be hoping to finally get one in the end zone here. First and 10 at the Venom 17 yard line. A quick toss, same kind of play to the far side and it works almost as well to the far side to Fertzen as it did to the near side. Not quite as much yardage gained, about six, maybe seven. And looking deep down the field has been what has cost the Lions here in the second half. Look at Ewing again there with another nice block to make sure they come close to picking up another first down. But as I said, we've, we've seen the Lions throw their couple interceptions on those, those deep passes down the field. Now deciding to go short, just pick up the yardage that's there. And... That's what's working for them here on this drive. And really has the Venom defense on its heels. Second down and a long two to go for the first down. The pass complete in the end zone for the touchdown right over the defense and into the arms of Ewing for the score. Another one for Ewing. And when we see this replay, you have to check out how the Lions set this one up. Fake the screen, which says they had just gone to twice in a row and then just easily find Ewing in the end zone, getting the Venom to bite a little bit, trying not to get uh, burnt on the screen pass once more, and it frees up Ewing for another touchdown, his fourth of the day. And you saw the Venom player, Maurice contact Dows. He was in the vicinity, but just couldn't jump high enough to get any finger or hand on the ball. And so the easy touchdown pass. Richardson's extra point kick looks a little weird, and it misses the mark. His first miss of the night, I think. And so with 7.36 left to play in this fourth quarter, we've got a timeout. It's the Lions now leading the Venom 47-20. to We're back after this on the Texas Panhandle Sports Network and News Channel 10-2. Honey, did you see this crack in the wall? I'm going to have to hire a contractor. Hey. We're going to need a foundation repair contract. Relax. I've already called the right people. That's probably them right now. You must be Mrs. Green. This guy's a contractor? Jeff, nice to meet you. Just because your foundation is settling doesn't mean you have to. It's time to expect more from your contractor. Call for your free, no-obligation inspection today. Hey, Bob, roof's looking a little rough there. Yeah, I've been meaning to get somebody to take a look at that. Well, don't sweat it. I know a guy. I heard you could use a new roof. Don't just let someone fix your roof. Mayfield Roofing has been in business since 1961 and will be around well after the storm to take care of you. Mayfield Roofing. Is your house letting in more than just sunshine? Drafty windows and doors can make your home feel uncomfortable and cost you money on your energy bills. Here at Reese Window and Door Replacement, we can help. We specialize in replacing windows, exterior doors, storm doors, and even pet doors. Our experienced technicians will get the job done right, quickly and efficiently. Don't suffer through another summer with drafty windows and doors. Call today for your free estimate. That's 806-335-0677. Reese Window and Door Replacement. Well, just as the Venom were trying to 
get some traction here in this second half and making a little progress while the Lions uh, offense comes to life. Like you said, it hadn't been exactly the overpowering offense that we saw in the first half, but it didn't matter. Yeah, and there was that bad snap on their last offensive drive, just something that has, for whatever reason, been an issue today for the Venom, just getting clean snaps off, and that's kind of the the first thing you got to take care of as an offense, just make sure you get the snap off. Meanwhile, Lions offense got back in a rhythm, and who else there on the touchdown? Ewing, he's been the star of the game unquestionably so far. And What is that, I think, four touchdown catches for Ewing? Like four for Ewing so far on the day. And he's just been dynamite, both as a receiver and a return man. Richardson, the deep back this time. If he'll get a chance, and it looks like he will. From deep in his own end zone. Has a hole over the right side, tries to cut it back, and does with limited success as he across the 15 out to about the 18, maybe 19-yard line to start this possession. Mike, the... Venom crowd for as excited as they were on that first return touchdown of the game for the Venom. This place was energized. Now it's become a little more quiet as this game winds to an end and the Venom find themselves in considerable hole. But just as I say that, the make some noise graphic comes up and we're trying to get the crowd back into it. I think they they, they had a feeling that I was about to say that. Like, we need to get the Must crowd have. jazzed up again. Yeah. Courtesy of K.J. Doyle, first and 10 at the 18. You know what would help even more? A big, long touchdown pass play. I think the Venom might want to cook one of those up as well. But, again, problems with the offensive snap for some reason. You know what? We didn't see any of that last week that I recall. Certainly not nearly as many as what they've had tonight. It's been confusing. I don't know if we can... Able to get a closer look somehow, at what, for whatever reason, why? It's just kind of dribbling back there. Yeah, I don't, I don't, it, I don't know why the the Venom offensive line has has struggled to to get that one up in the air. It just seems like, and especially on on key down and distance, it's been a, an unfortunate element of this game. And you know, when you just give away plays like that, you just throw away one of your four plays to get a first down. It it really costs you. Josh Jackson is in there at center now. He's not the he wasn't the starting center. Bryant Ankara was the starting center. Pass deep, but underthrown, and, well, it, did they catch it anyway? No, going to be incomplete. Looked like it was going to be picked off for sure. Two defenders back there for the Lions. And I don't know if we, had, we didn't have a great angle on it from our vantage point. The Lions are trying to argue that it deflected off the side and stayed in play, maybe deflected off a few players' hands as well, but again, we're just kind of covered up by the the side there. You can see them kind of tip it. Would have fallen right into the hands of the other defender if they were able to, but oh, here's going to be a the great angle of this. The pass touched the second part of the wall, therefore it is an incomplete pass. Yeah, it was over Personal the... foul, roughing the passer. Number 52 defense. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. So either way would not have mattered for the Lions as they get called for the roughing the passer. So even if it was an interception, it wouldn't have been due to the penalty. But at least much better field position for the Venom at the 24-yard line. And they were trying to connect on that deep one. Again, roughing the passer so they, they get away with it. But Dalton Cole trying to force one down the field there. Really not, not much was there. Two defenders in the area. And if not for, for that late penalty, with the pass rush coming in a little late on Cole, that would have been one that would have cost the Venom another possession here. Gets a good snap from center this time. Avoids the rush and then fires a pass right on target over the middle, just short of the 15 to Rodney Pierre. I think or that might have been Brock. It was, actually. Sorry. It was a nice play by Brockman, and he almost was able to get away here and go field. all the way for the touchdown as we have an injury, injured player. But a uh, great little catch in traffic. If he was just able to break that one tackle, would have been gone to the house. But one of the Venom defensive linemen down now. Or the uh, Lions. Or Lions. Yeah. So a momentary break in the action. Yep. I was going to say maybe just a cramp. That's what it looks like. And those hurt. 
as an old man who <laughs> suffers from that at night, I can tell you those hurt. Well, good to see he was able to get off the field. And on that play, the Venom able to pick up the first down. And uh, one of the real positive plays we've seen from this offense so far in this game. Uh, and, you know, opportunities have been few and far between down here towards the end zone for the Venom. So if they can convert here, you know, he's still down considerably in this one, but just get some positive momentum towards the end of this game as you try to see maybe of who these players you brought in this week to replace some of the injured players of who maybe will be able to stick around. Oh, all kinds of movement up front on that snap back to the quarterback. Number 91 offense, five-yard penalty, it's first down. And you could see Dalton Cole's frustration there after the play, uh, knowing that the Venom were, were going to be backed up. And, you know, it really feels like, as you know, you see here, just kind of throws the ball into the ground and, or after hitting himself on the head with it a couple times, just the frustration it, coming out it is, here. It has been frustrating for Dalton Cole tonight. Towards the end of the game. So, yeah, he, he's taking a lot of hits. And, yeah. you know, you, you have to – Give uh, the, the Venom the benefit of the doubt here, knowing that they have been so depleted this week. So first and 15 from the 21. Time to throw this time, but too tall. And over the head of uh, Brockman, incomplete. The Lions players a little frustrated after running into each other there. A little more frustration than you would expect to see at this point of the game, up 27. And it was an incomplete pass anyway. It's not as if he gave up a touchdown on that one, but... Still coming out there a little bit. But as I was saying, you know, the, the, the Venom, the positive you have to take from this is knowing, hey, this was the defending league champs that we were going up against here today. This is a great team capable of, you know, going all the way, one of the best teams, if not the best team in the league this year. And we're a roster that's lose, missing a lot of our guys. So I, I don't think this is one that you look back on and, and really take uh, too much of a, a, an emotional hit from. Schultz going to the air again, and a great catch for the touchdown. Wow, fingertip catch for Brockman. Hassan Brockman out of Valley Forge College comes up with a beauty. And look at the adjustment that Brockman had to make on this football. It's great coverage, and he just has to fall backwards and, like you said, just get his fingertips on it while he's getting rammed into the wall. And he's still hung on. It, 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 that is not a tough, a, that is not an easy play to make. An extremely tough catch to be falling backwards and have to make that adjustment mid route. But <laughs> Brockman has, has uh, made some nice plays on this drive. We saw the little 10 yard pickup he had, and now the go to option on the touchdown as well as the Venom lineup for two. See what they come up with here. And some big hits, and it looks like, and the helmet comes off. After all of that, Dalton Cole's not going to be able to get in. Good job gang tackling there by the Columbus Lions, and they hold the Venom out of the end zone. Score remains 47 to 26, 208 left to go here in this fourth quarter of play. Well, it's. <laughs> Dalton Cole right now, of course, just lost his helmet on that one. Looked like he wanted some sort of maybe penalty uh, for maybe a face mask or something if his helmet flying off, but uh, no call from the, the officials there. And you can just tell Cole, even after that touchdown, just <laughs> if you take that many hits in a, a game, you're going to be frustrated. You're going to be feeling it. You can tell that that's kind of been what has plagued, uh, plagued them here today and, and something that's certainly uh, come out for Cole right now, just being frustrated after taking so many hits. We get another look at that beautiful touchdown. Boy, that, that is worth another look. My goodness. Great throw from Dalton Cole. But as you said, the adjustment is, is what made that catch. And then to hold on as you smack into the wall. Yeah, not easy. Well, we'll see what the Venom decide to do here. Down three scores. I, at this point, you might as well go for an onside kick attempt yeah. and see if you can recover, get the ball back for your offense, and just I, three, three scores in two minutes might be somewhat challenging. You know, we didn't see the offense in too much of a hurry in their last drive, but at this point of the game, there's no there's no sense in uh, leaving anything to 
to chance, and you might as well just try to, hey, let's go for the let's go for the onside kick, try to get the offense the ball back, and who knows what can happen. It's St. Patrick's Day, luck's in the air. Maybe you can find a little bit of luck in the final two minutes and, you know, get get uh, back into this game. I don't know. I don't know if St. Patrick's in the crowd. You never know. He loves arena football. <laughs> Is that right? I think so. I think that's in the it's in the scripture. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Well, again, not a whole lot of time left, but let's see what the Venom can do here on this kickoff. My ball still live. It's finally picked up, and then look out. How in the world did he get that and take it to the house? Mike Swan. There are multiple flags down as you look Ewing is back there with his hands in the air. Looks uh, like he knows that one's coming sick. back. Yeah, he's uh, sick. Looks like personal foul, illegal blindside block, number 12, receiving team. The penalty's half the distance to the goal. First down, Columbus Lions. And that one will be on you. And he, he did not like the call. He thought he just made a great block on that play. And it looked like the Lions were lined up, ready for it to be an onside kick. And they had one, one man back to return it. As you can see, uh, they didn't have many blockers back there for him. But as he recovers it and comes out, let's see. Oh, it looks like that Ewing block was just yeah, off screen. Right there. Couldn't quite see it, but it was looked like it was a great return for a, a few seconds as he celebrated. But this one's going to be coming well back. And I do wonder what we'll see out of this Lions offense with limited time remaining. Uh, if they try to work some things out offensively or just decide, you know what, let's, let's get out of this game as, as quickly as we can and move on to next week with a W. So inside their own five-yard line, back in at quarterback is Newman. Under pressure, scrambles, gets loose, and heads down the sideline. Gets a good block down the field as well. Well, maybe not so yeah. good a block. Too good, you might say. Here as the, the Venom came away with the football there. Check out the flag thrown near midfield where that block was being thrown. A lot to sort out here is I'm not sure exactly how the Venom ended up coming away with the football. I don't know if the officials caught that. As you, you see, you know, we talked about. Hunter was forced out of bounds prior to the ball coming loose. Holding number seven offense. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. It's first and ten after enforcement. Alright, so the first yeah. down still picked up, but the Venom there. Of course, they did look like they forced the fumble. Maybe they had a turnover, but uh, not to be as runner ruled out of bounds before that. I, I did want to make note of the fact that uh, the the Lions have decided to, to keep rolling on offense here with J.C. Newman in. We, we saw him early in the second half. They clearly want to get him some reps at quarterback, and they clearly have decided that with under two minutes to go, they're going to commit to that plan and try to get him some uh, some time here to show what he has. Well, definitely he's got the elusiveness. And we've got a timeout with one minute left to play. 47-26, Lions on top of the Venom on the Texas Panhandle Sports Network and News Channel 10-2. Overhead Door Company of Amarillo is proud to be a family-owned and operated business in the Texas Panhandle for over 50 years. We offer high quality and all warranted work for your garage door. Need to replace a whole door? Don't worry. We can just replace the parts you need and you can save money. We're the original overhead door of Amarillo. Look for the red ribbon. Overhead door. Introducing Ortega's Lawn Care Service. Need a lawn makeover? We know lawn care. Whether you're planting, trimming, or just need routine maintenance, we do it all. Your lawn deserves the best. Your lawn transformed. Don't wait. Get a quote today. We're here for you. Your journey to a beautiful lawn starts here. Call us today at 806-341-0004. Let's get started. Call us today at 806-341-0004. Got one minute left to play, and there, there we are, are right yeah, there. Up there in the, the wow. rafters. Luckily, none of the balls that have went in the rafters have hit us, but 
You I'd know, be ready for it. I tell you what, did. I almost got hit by a foul ball at the sod play at the Hodgetown the other day. <laughs> oh, yeah? At an Amarillo College game. I mean, it was just past our open window to the right. And I, I was ducking for cover, I'll oh. tell you. That's what happens in some of these games. Especially, you got to watch out. You go to a baseball, softball practice out here. There's batting practice going on. I've been in foul territory. i got to be careful. Yeah. One of those Bushland players came and had a hey, – he, he said I saved you. It went behind me, and he still kind of knocked it away, but he said I saved you. I'll give him credit for it. I'll say <laughs> that he did. But. So from the 16-yard line, first down and 10 for the Columbus Lions. Newman dropping back to pass. Let's it go over the middle. A little bit short under some pressure there towards the end of that play. And uh, I think clearly no question for the Lions that Marcus Brooks has been the better quarterback today. He didn't love the interception that he threw. Uh, really, either of the interceptions he threw, the, the first one in the first half, certainly predetermined read. You know, he was he was throwing that as soon as he took the snap, and uh, we saw a great play there from D. Reese to pick it off. And uh, then he comes back in in the third quarter, throws another interception. So it hasn't been perfect for the Lions in their first game, as you've mentioned, but uh, if there was any questions they had about oh, who man. was quarter, who their better option at quarterback was, I think that certainly Marcus Brooks has proven that he's that that player. He was outstanding tonight. And another penalty marker. We've had a ton of those tonight. By the way, in case you're wondering, next game for the Amarillo Venom will be Star, on the road against Corbin, Corpus Christi. Offense. Five-yard penalty. And that'll be on it's second down. March the 30th, the Corpus Christi Tritons, the opponent there. By the way, they will play the uh, Columbus Lions again. That'll be in Columbus uh, later on in the season. Well, not that much later, April 12th, as a matter of fact. Next home game will be coming up. Uh, let's see. They say, oh, there we go, April 27th, and that will be against Corpus Christi as well. April 27th. Second and 15 from the 11. That pass, too tall, incomplete. And guess what? Another flag on the play. Newman has really shown a lot of athleticism in this game, but his accuracy has not been there. Oh, rough in the passer, number 55, defense. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Well, Thank you, sir. Devon, you're welcome. Devon Trailer. That defensive front for the Venom committing the foul. So that will put it out across the 20 at the 21 yard line. And a fresh set of downs. 49.3 seconds left. The Lions dancing their way to victory. We saw the moves on the field from Ewing. He's clearly shown he has the moves off the field as well. In fact, all of the Lions do. I was watching the whole team dance earlier. They, they all are well, gifted with that ability. Dance-worthy victory, certainly. I, no doubt. On the road against one of the top teams. Figured to be the top team, one of the top teams in the league, the Venom. There's a wide-open receiver again and a good open field tackle. Otherwise, Ewing would have had another touchdown. Man, the juke move that Ewing put on there looked like it was going to get the Venom defense, but luckily they able to make the tackle there. But just look at, I mean, look at the agility that Ewing shows here. Just that wiggle ooh, almost got right by him into the end zone. When I mean, you're talking about. I think it was Devontae Tinsley who stopped him with that good open field tackle, by the way. Great play. Tinsley's had a couple of interceptions tonight for the Venom. Clock running with 15 seconds left. First and 10 from the nine. Struggling for yardage. A QB power action out of that, and the clock will wind. Timeout, Columbus Lions. They're first. It's 30 seconds. And, you know, Mike, just a great timeout from the Lions. With five seconds to go, up 21, you need to make sure that you close this game out strong and punch in another touchdown. So smart time out there from Lions to make sure that this game does not end because the, the worst thing that could happen at this point is that this game ends 47 to 26 for them. <laughs> well, they've got it at the eight, so they're in good position. Uh, 
it to score again. Interesting play call there, honestly, though, from the Lions. A little QE power action. It seemed like uh, Newman was just trying to follow his blockers. Not much opened up there. Uh, the Venom do a nice job bottling that one up. But you would think if you're the Lions right now and you're trying to see what Newman has at quarterback, you'd want to see him throwing. Clearly, we've seen he's athletic. He can move. He, he can uh, evade rushers. He's got some uh, great juke moves. But I want to see what kind of an arm he has. Looks like he's going to put it up right here. And he throws to the end zone. And it's incomplete. And no flags on the play, don't think. Swan was the intended receiver. And that will do it. Well, again, 47-26, your final score as the Venom fall here at home in a tough one against the Columbus Lions, the defending league champions. And definitely they're off to a good start in defending that title. Venom will regroup and again be back in action in a couple of weeks on the road at Corpus Christi. We'll take a uh, minute timeout here and then we'll come back and recap it for you right after this on the Texas Panhandle Sports Network and News Channel 10 too. TPSN brings you the best local sports coverage in the Panhandle, the biggest plays and latest scores. Catch the action anytime at tpsnsports.com or the TPSN mobile app. The Texas Panhandle Sports Network, the best choice for local sports. Is your house letting in more than just sunshine? Drafty windows and doors can make your home feel uncomfortable.